everyone, and welcome to episode three of season three of the Street Fighter I Got Next community podcast group. What's going on, y'all? It's your host with the most, the Wind Commander himself, Shadow Ace on the ones and twos, and I'll be the moderator for this podcast I, this evening, joined by my co-host, the second half. I'm only one half of the team, but the second half of the team, you know what I'm saying? A production always making sure the vibes are smooth. Wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before I do all that, isn't tomorrow a special day for someone? If I'm if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> could it could it be that there is a uh, a birthday in the midst that uh, you know what I'm saying? One of the co-hosts, uh, you know, one of the one of us has a birthday tomorrow, but it ain't me though. I know it is someone's birthday. It is Sir Retro, the mayor of making himself happy birthday, my dude. Appreciate What's it. What's going on, Sir Retro, man? How you feeling today, man? Older, for sure. <laughs> Older, for sure. I mean, wiser. Would you be oh, wiser? Yo? <laughs> we, we leveling up. You don't level down. I mean, we level up. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, though. You're not wrong, though. Um, yeah, but yeah, I <laughs> definitely feel a little bit wiser. I learned about cars. Okay, I get that fixed today for my birthday. <laughs> so that's new. But um, definitely for sure. Um, I feel good and tired. Been a long year so far, but you know, I'm mm-hmm. glad to make it this far. Uh, and for those who do not know, um, of course, I'm so retro, um, aka the mayor of Macon, as a lot of people call me it nowadays. Uh, especially you see in my Discord, it's kind of permanent <laughs> due to some changes on, on names. But um, mm-hmm. yes, um, I'm head TO of the Reboot Reg K Gaming, proudly head TO of them. Um, and also tournament director of the esports organizations by that nurse in the middle of Georgia area, specifically in Macon. Um, been involved with the scene for it as far as the Reaper Retro Gaming, we it's been five years. We have a fifth anniversary recently, but overall, um, been involved with the community for a lot longer than that. Um, it's undefined how how long I've been involved, but yes, um, tournament mm-hmm. organizer, um, teacher, trainer. Um, coach in many ways, um, you can call me, but also overall fighting game enthusiast. Um, def- definitely play Street Fighter main for Street Fighter 6 is my homie DJ, he loves the party, so do I. So, um, definitely that's me in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, thank you, uh, shout out is for letting me be involved with this awesome series for three seasons, and definitely looking forward to more. And of course, you know, thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, uh, I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, for sure, man. You know, once again, happy birthday to Sir Retro, you guys. Man, if you're listening, go ahead and uh, you know, send Retro a message with the birthday wishes too as well. You know, again, invaluable asset to this uh this whole team. You know, teamwork definitely does make the dream work and the fact that we've been doing this podcast series for so long and we've been talking with so many different people um throughout not just our state of georgia that we're in right now we've talked to uh we've gone across the map in the u.s and you know got you know how they felt about the street fighter franchise and just Mm. fgc meta in general so we've just been talking with so many different people and you know our journey who knows where our journey is going to take us next so um we're just still traveling we're still trying to get people to talk to and those who are willing to make it happen we definitely do appreciate you because you guys are definitely the cornerstone of this series and you know without that continued support we wouldn't be able to do this you know so we do definitely do appreciate everybody whether you're listening in to the live broadcast or uh you're catching a recap that's going to be on youtube on reboot retro k gaming's uh youtube channel you know we do appreciate that support and we're just going to keep going up from there man so definitely there is a lot to to talk about um you know especially post evo our last episode uh we sat down uh and talked with blockbuster john who is a ryu player in street fighter 6 uh he's actually been playing ryu for years ever since street fighter 4 so Mm. uh, well even beyond that you know he's been playing street fighter 2 he plays ryu in that so he's uh he's actually the a commentator co-host uh that we work with with untamed gaming that we do tournaments and events out there with them 
Um, so the fact that he agreed to get on the podcast and talk with us and share his knowledge and insight, uh, we definitely do appreciate that. So if you guys missed out on that episode, it is archived on that uh, YouTube page that I mentioned, Reboot Retro K Gaming's YouTube page. Just go to there, look for that Blockbuster John episode for season three, and uh, you're good to go. So this platform, you know, I'm saying we assemble people, like I said, they're all throughout the uh you know fighting game scene and just to get their views and opinions on how they feel about the game um the latest entry with street fighter 6 being out for about two years excuse me not two years two months now and uh you know we just get your you know get their opinions on how they feel about the game yeah. and how their mm -hmm. scene is if their scene changed you know if they brought back any street fighter ogs or fgc ogs and mm -hmm. you know we see new players coming into the mix now so it start it's starting to get some life flowing back into the, uh, the fgc metaverse as it were so um definitely do you know if you guys want to talk with us we'll be more than happy to it is an open platform you just got to reach out get to us tell a friend to tell a friend and uh, we just keep going from there so Sir Richard already introduced uh, himself. I'll introduce uh, me. I am Shadow Ace. I am a player, commentator, podcaster, bracket runner, TO, a man of many hats throughout the Southeast. Mm -hmm. um, those That's kind of like my primary region for events that I've been going to. I haven't been to a West Coast or a up north of it as of yet, but I do think in the horizon that is going to change quite soon. And I can't wait to start my venture uh, with that traveling uh, there. So if you guys see me at an event, you know what I'm saying? You know, come say what's up. I'm there, a big guy. So, you know, not hard to see, hard to miss, but um, I can't definitely can't wait to meet and interact with uh, new people uh, once I start that journey. So, yeah, I'm saying hey. so again, yo, know, if you missed out on the previous episode, I'll say it one more time. Please check it out on Reboot Retro K Gaming's YouTube channel for that Season 1 and Season 2 playlist for the full episodes. Um, and I also have it pinned on my Twitter page at Mind of Shadow Ace as well for that link to that playlist. So um, today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, normally we would have a special guest with us mm -hmm. um, and talk with them about a few things, but we had to make adjustments. Um, they weren't able to make it in. Mm -hmm. um, it could possibly pop in a bit later, but as it's looking right now, we just got to keep it realistic. More likely, they may not make it in for today. We could, uh, you know, talk about that a bit later on. But yeah, um, we again, we want to make sure you we can get you guys on and get your thoughts and you know express yourself to the world. And uh, I do like that people are interested in doing that, but the uh, the part of showing up is going to be. A, it's a key important. It's, it's very important. You know, I got to get that mm -hmm. idea for production. Um, you know, Sir Retro, he takes his time to edit and, you know, splice videos and things of that nature to put together special things uh, for the intros to, you know, highlight the players that you will be seeing on the podcast. And when the people, you know, if they're not able to, to show up, it kind of makes his uh, efforts go down the drain a little bit there. So, I mean, at least gets, it at least gets them some practice, but at the same time, it's like, dang, I can't use the I can't use the intro if they not there. So please, guys, you know, if, we're, if you're listening to this and you want to get on the podcast, please make sure you can show up on time. Uh, we definitely would appreciate it. And uh, communication is definitely key into making sure we get a good episode out there. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and uh, continue. Luckily, I had a contingency plan. And just in case something like this could happen. Uh, we got definitely a few things to talk about. So our last episode was uh, when we were talking about Blockbuster Giant. We were trying to get predictions on what was going to happen at EVO. Now we're post-EVO. Yeah. So, yeah, man, there's plenty to talk about. I mean, uh, let me see. Oh, Where should we go first? Dang. Dang. That... Yeah. And like I said, shh. man. We had to watch, because I know you guys had the watch party in 404, right? Did you go, did you go to any of those? The watch party? Yeah. Uh, they had an event, but I was not able to go. Okay, okay, was, okay. Yeah, I was not able to. I ended up staying home and just watching it um, um, through, yeah, through a Discord. But I mean, it was a, yeah. it was a very, very interesting format that they had this year. You know, with the, yeah. the finals being top six, that's the first thing in history. Right. Um, and I'm like, that's that's kind of unique. 
Mm-hmm. It's definitely kind of unique. Uh, which games did you end up checking out? So, um, mainly the ones that Georgia was in. Um, of course, oh yeah, that's right. I definitely have some updates on that. Spe- speaking of that, with being at Evo. Um, so, the main one was MK11 because, you know, it's been a while since i um seen that game around. And of course, Georgia took that. GG's to Young Ninja Killer from Atlanta to take the victory for MK11 at EVO. Congrats to him. Appreciate representing Georgia. Um, I, it was a, that was a fun uh, tournament to watch. Um, of course, checked out the other events, side events. Uh, shout out to the homie Neil taking fifth place in Sam Show. Georgia represent. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we. Mm. That, okay, Young Neil. It was crazy. Oh, that was fun to watch because that was Saturday night, but my cat was watching it too. <laughs> yeah, the cat was getting hurt. I, I legit, hold on, let me see. I, I, it's a video, but I legit have recorded the video of my cat sitting there watching Sam show and watching Neil play, and she's just sat there and watched back and forth what's going on. It was crazy. And I'm like, oh, it's not. My cat is actually literally watching Evil too. So. It- <sighs> <laughs> hey, hey, there it is, the cat, yo. The cat. What was the, what's your cat's name? Um, Jaja. Jaja. Okay. Based on yeah, Hungarian, Jaja. Yeah, based on the Hungarian princess. I know, right? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it was it was it was great, but um, yeah. So she was watched it. Um, of course, I watched Tekken. Oh man, seeing um, yeah, even to the very end. I think I tried to watch as many, many games possible, but most importantly, because it was the first time to be featured at the tournament, Street Fighter Six. Hmm. Seven thousand oh, and seventy players. That's a lot that. of people. That's a lot of people. But I'm gonna say this because I am very proud of two homies from Middle Georgia. Blood No Ben with his DJ and Chato with the Lily to take 193rd out of that 7,000 plus. Oh, that's amazing. That's a that's a you yo, you can't tell them nothing. Like, bro, I look how look how high this how the, how high they went out of seven thousand. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's impressive. Very that's impressive. that is really good. That is really good. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. If you you if you play some you know what I'm saying? Within that frame, within that top frame, mm. yeah, you, that means you know something. You know a little something about some Street Fighter Six. They both put uh, in work. Mm-hmm. So shout outs to those guys. I mean, just imagine how many games they had to play. Yeah. You know, to get to that point, how many pools they had to go through <sighs> just to get there. So it's. I mean, you can tell. <laughs> if you get that um, Chipotle um bag and the um the entree card. You got. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, you get that for, for getting out of pools, right? <laughs> yeah. They give you free Chipotle. Yeah, the round one, you get the uh, entree card, and round two, you get the bag. So, yep. Hey, there you go, man. I would be, that's a, a champion's burrito that they had to have. <laughs> for that. They, they had to, they earned the champion's burrito for placing that high at Evil out of 7,000 something people, man. I could man. only imagine how the environment was. But um, I mean, they had plenty of setups for sure. Uh, you know, to make something like that, they had to. They had no choice. Oh yeah, that tournament had to be on point. It had a lot of numbers. Yeah. I mean, because the thing about it, shoot, I mean, it's Evo. That been around over twenty years. You know, I say mm-hmm. I think the longest other one was like is the final round like the first when the first like big yeah yeah, yeah final okay. yeah yeah final round was definitely right. one longest running right yeah. but in a battle of the bay it was originally was called and you know it the fact those series of events turned into something major like i said the fact like we started warehouses and garages and basements and this and place to the mandalay bay you no know, fast forward it and like and look at the number of entrants that's this players was eleven thousand and sixty four or eighty something whatever. It loved for eleven thousand players all over the world, countries you had probably never heard of to do that. And the thing mm. is, like majority of it was in Street Fighter, uh, but then of course you had other games. But to see Georgia to even stand out, to even take a trophy, a few medals here and there, 
in the process or make make it very far out of that. That shows a lot of, you know, that's a really huge showcase of major proof about how our state really, hey, we got something here. We got something here. You know, you got two. Oh, man, yeah. I saw, um, uh-huh. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you, you good. I, like, I was saying, like, you got two players from, they made top six in um, Tekken. No, yeah, top one made to top four. You know, shout out to Genghis Don and to Anakin. And they got acknowledged at the, uh, and, and WWE afterwards. And Xavier Woods did a segment in the, in the WWE episode the Monday after. And like, yo, man, I went to Evo. And I saw Anakin and Genghis Don. Like, he literally was live on WWE doing the wrestling just talk about that that's that's amazing that's you know, amazing of course he lives in Atlanta. he was at evo right and he was like yeah right <laughs> there you go he was at evo himself and then he lived in atlanta but it shows that you know and then like i said you know energy color taking it no you have neil taking it you no know, fifth place placing really well you had you know all these players all you know from here so yeah but the fact that you no know, evo itself to to be what it what it is now, it's a, I, I, this Evo is extremely enjoyable as a viewer. I definitely would say say that, no doubt about it. I mean, the watch party that we had, we had ten people. We sat there and watched there. We were there from one, from no, from twelve thirty to ten o'clock at one bar. Went down to the next bar to watch the finals from ten to two, for um the uh, Street Fighter Six finals. We was oh no we was dedicated. No oh, we was watching watching oh we was cheering screaming yelling, yeah. This Evo was overall I say it was definitely enjoyable. Oh man no 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 doubt about it the first year of of any of any games launch especially at Evo is mm-hmm. always going to be the most remember mm-hmm. memorable because you're always going to remember the first event right you mm-hmm. know even few years down the line you know seven eight years from now. Uh, when we we'll, when we get uh, Street Fighter Seven or <laughs> or something, we could always like, yeah, remember when Street Fighter Six came out first? The first year it came out at Evo it had seven thousand something people, and you know they say history repeats itself, and it could be the same case for uh, for Street Fighter Seven. When the Street Fighter Seven, the first year it'll be at Evo or whichever name it could be rebranded to in the future, that'll that'll be like, hey, now this event got eight thousand. It'll just keep going up and up from there. Because now that fighting games are being more, you know, accessible and the controls are starting to change a little bit, um, and you can start to see how these how games are being developed now mm-hmm, when they mm-hmm. get pushed towards a certain agenda. So, you know, that's really you know having seven thousand, you know, getting one hundred and ninety two out of seven thousand something players. That's really good, you know. They, you know that ain't that ain't nothing to sneeze at. That yep. knows that you a threat, and um. And then and not just them too. Like we had a couple of Georgia players. Like uh, that, we had our and our group was saying that hey, you know, I made it out of my pool. Yeah, I made it out of my pool on winner side, loser side. So yeah, there was a couple of players that made it out. I mean, we still claim that VIP, even though I know he's Kansas, Kansas, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, you know, Musa and everything. Yeah, I mean, like I said I probably I think I found a little more bags because like of the middle of Georgia in the comparison. But like I said I can't you no know, disregard. You know the rest of the Georgia you know, people from, especially from y'all area. You know, shout outs to y'all. Shout outs to Musa. Shout outs to you know. I try to say the list of everybody who went there, but I know mm. y'all guys. They went there, have a blast. Shout outs to y'all guys for placing really well too, and you know, holding down the fort. You know, like I said, make it strong. Um, hey, we we here. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it can only go up from there, man. Exactly. You, know, you, get, you definitely gonna <clears throat> keep getting these newer players coming in, and you're gonna see some old heads return, try to turn back into the fray, and try to dip their heads in. Like I got one more in me, I got one more run in me, you know, before they may decide to put the sticks down for good. So it's nice to oh. see these players come back, uh, and you know, trying to keep the games alive and thriving. And you know, local, local numbers. I'm looking at it across the board, not just our state scene. But I'm looking at other scenes, and they having some. They have some really good numbers, 
man. They're getting over 25, 25 entrants per event. And these are things that are, might either happen like on a weekly, mm-hmm. you know, their monthly numbers are really good. Mm-hmm. You know, things are starting to go up. So when we when we get potentially get uh, future guests back on here, uh, especially Kansas City scene, if we get them back on here, I'm sure they got plenty of stories to tell us about the, uh, you know, their Street Fighter 6 experience, because that's another group of passionate players uh, out there that we had on prior season. So I'm, I'm excited to see how what's going on with them up there. So mm-hmm. in regards to Evo outside of the top six, yeah, you've already mentioned uh, Anakin and Genghis Dunn from Tekken, you know, shout outs to them. Uh, mm-hmm sure but uh it's in the top six was very interesting i want to say for street fighter six um man you definitely got a, a good variety of characters right right and uh which is that was the main thing you know there weren't too many repeats no of uh, people using using the same characters so i think that's that's a good thing balance wise of how the game's engine is flowing so it's not like a definitive all right you're going to see the same top three you know the same top four characters in the finals you saw a good mix a variety of uh different players in there right you know right and now you know mm -hmm. not only that but you did notice uh i think was it my bingo card yes i forgot he's uh but there was a modern player in top six yeah, Hatani. Yeah, Hatani's. I think uh, I had a beauty card that wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was a it was a Hatani with the uh, the modern Chun-Li. Chun. You know what I'm saying? And all you saw was uh, the Chun Li emote with the M's, <laughs> with the M's on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So they saw several memes got birthed out of there. Oh, modern controls for babies, and oh, you know this, that, and the third. But hey, man, Hatani. He put in the work for a reason. He got the top six at Evo with Modern and Chun. And uh, people are just going to have to hold that. Yo, Modern Controls are actually out Damn. here doing damage. You know? So I'm excited to see, because this is only two months. We're only two months into the game. True, right? true. We're about to get our second character. You know, we had Rasheed come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were actually discussing how many how many Rasheeds would be at Evo and stuff. And there were quite a few. Um, but I don't think that they, the character was like fully fleshed out to the level it is now where you were starting to see a little bit more, uh, Rashid's doing some, uh, some work out there in brackets and stuff. So especially cause it was such like a short notice thing. Like Rashid was only out for about two weeks before evil. So I don't think like people would have, really, yeah. yeah, I don't think they would like really bet it all on just going in with the character. They tried, but in the end, I think it just came down to a matchup thing. You know, you, 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 I don't think you can really do too much damage with a two week character like that. And it definitely would have to be fleshed out a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see uh, Rashid in the mix at future events. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You're right, Chris. There's no jury in top eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that is definitely, you know, something to take notice of. Because that was like, I felt like Evil was like a big field test for data. It definitely was. Definitely was. Definitely yeah. was. Definitely was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when people were trying to figure out like which characters, are, like, people were kind of hinging their bets on, I know this character's going to be in top 60. I know yeah. this character's going to be in top 8. And they had, like you said, they had their own bingo card about which characters I made could, mine. you know, appear. <laughs> I think I did for yeah, mainly I did better on Rashid because a lot of people were saying that yeah, you know, Rashid's gonna be in there easily because no one not gonna know the matchup that quick in the week and a half, blah 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 blah. blah. I said, you know what? I bet there be no Rashid by top twenty four. I'll be very gracious for that. I'll, I'll, I'll be grateful. I'll be. I'll. I'll give you a grace period. Like they're not gonna make it that far. They may be like maybe top maybe. 196, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe 48, not top 24. Mm-hmm. No, Rashid is gone. So, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, that, that's, that's definitely not, yeah, that's, that's especially with characters that have that been putting in so much work and practicing, you know, even before the, well, I can't, well, yeah, we can say that. Yeah, even before the launch of the game, you know, saying with the whole uh, crack scenario. So it's just um, very, very interesting how I thought this character would have been that evil doing, you know, tearing up these brackets. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were a few people picking him, but 
in the end, nah, it just wasn't it. it not this year, Rasheed. Maybe next year, you know, maybe next year. We'll see. But um, in regards to character usage, you know, that I've been seeing, like, every time I saw Lily on stream, she got bopped, you know, and that kind of, like, that put me in bad spirits because I'm like, dang, man. I thought, you know what I'm saying? I thought Lily could, could do some things, man. The allegations. She plays, mm. Yeah, I thought she could beat the allegations, man, but she, it's just that she just plays the game much different than uh other characters how well how i feel you know basically off of using her um she just plays it at a much different pace and when you got a characters that are so that's so rushed down and offense heavy um it's just it, it's a little too much for her at that time she can still do damage but it's just she has to make a good sequence going to mm -hmm. get there um but yeah regardless you had a really really good variety of uh you know different characters and i right, like right. that um by the time you know this next year we're, we'll definitely see more characters into the mix mm -hmm. we mentioned uh you mentioned aki a bit earlier uh that they did for the announcements what do you think about her uh her trailer well i'm very very interested because you know the biggest speculation um mainly the way her name is spelled and her um, design style, a lot of people are expecting her to be something similar like um, Fong, who was in Street Fighter Five. And of course, you know, to see the trailer, she talks about poison. So mm -hmm. I think for her, is she going to carry on the legacy of Fong? Or she, you know, is she going to be like a new villain? Is she going to be a, you know, a neutral character of a sort. Look, look, she she ended up poisoning your avatar. She can't be your friend. That's, That's not true. something. A, that ain't something a friend would do. She's this. I mean, she's out here describing <laughs> the symptoms. True, true. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have irritable bowels. You're gonna do this. You're gonna be disoriented. Yeah, she did the whole I'm like, bro, this is not something a friend would say. All that would would do, yo. I, I mean, don't. I don't know about that. I mean, if it's like, yeah. I mean, JP gave you like, mm, uh, uh, it's two months. Is it a spoiler at the point? Still, have you played the what? War tour? What you talking about? Is it a spoiler? If you play, yeah, if you have two, uh, after two, I mean, two months, months, I mean, come on, yeah, you, you've gone through War tour, and if you haven't gone through World tour, please, this play. just gives you an. Yeah, this gives you an incentive to do it, man, because I know like, Retro can't hold it in. He want to talk about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because here's the thing. I think it will segue some something a little bit later. But you know, yeah. you, you'll meet JP because obviously you, you'll get all the move sets of the characters in the entire series in the in the sort world tour mode and mess around with it. You meet JP. You know, he might talk about psychic power. So I think you know the thing is he would have to try to kill you. If he you no know, and so forth, if he does, if he's like a true villain or anything, but in the end you do talk to him, you have to you know, learn from him about something about his soccer power. So you know, is he the bad guy? I don't know. But like I said, same thing with Aki. It, I mean, yeah, she gave you some poison. You know, you, you kind of may be able to survive it according to the cutscene because you know the character's going to appear in the in the war tour mode. So mm -hmm. there is some significance in the story, but as now as a play style, that's the biggest mystery because a lot of people are speculating. Like I said, she might be playing like Fong, because the way she did move in at one point was like a little slimy movement was like Fong style ish. So you know, hey, there you might have that Fong replacement because like she said, has. Uh... If I'm looking at so if I if I'm making a comparison, so Jury has the whole spider motif going on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think for Aki she has the snake. So I think yeah, Jury's mm. the spider and she's the snake. So she has like um, so like yeah, like she does the little venomous like snake like movement and stuff. So I think what it will be, I don't think it'll be a true coward crouch, but I think Wait. it'll be like definitely like an invasion type move oh that my. she'll have. Uh huh. It's just yeah. in my head. You know, Fong is F A N G. And that's like Fang. Yeah. Fang, Venom, Snake. That made a lot of sense about that. That, wow, that just clicked in my head. Oh my gosh. I, I'm so late. Because <laughs> a Fang of a, of a um, snake can be venomous. 
if, if it's a venomous snake is po- or poisonous whatever no poison is no venom is if it bites into you and then you suffer from it poisonous mm-hmm. if you bite into it or affect or yeah and it yeah and you, and it affects you but oh, okay I'm thinking too deep anyway um here's the thing about Aki though and I think I believe in Japanese Aki means autumn and that really makes sense why that she's coming out in, in, in the autumn is so, probably like around what September, late September, possibly early yeah. October. That's what probably, that's what I'm speculating. Yeah, but it, it, her name means autumn. It's like it's, it's it's with autumn in Japanese, and I'm like, ah. So, but that's the thing. So the name of itself, her name really kind of also plays a role. Because like I said the lore of the series and everything plays around a lot of the characters design and playstyle concept. Like we might get to that a little bit later, but yeah. Um, but as far as Aki though, I'm I'm not personally I want I want player, but I know that it would be some mm-hmm. certain people, especially their phone players, they would definitely jump onto her because we have you know FGC Jesus for example, you know, I think he can be very excited to try to play on her. Um, trying to think of other Mono uh, from Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. That's my speculation, because, you know. But I think with the gameplay system and everything, she may not play exactly like Fong. She might be a little agile. She might have different unique movements. Um, She might she might have the, the poison feature, but it may not be the same how it was and how Fong does it. I think because uh, yeah, you mentioned World Tour earlier, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, by now everybody should have gone gotten at least through halfway through world tour mode um you notice that some enemies will give you poison mm, you know the, yep, poison, yep, the yep. poison effect and um you know that's literally was just what aki will end up being um i think there's also one if i'm not mistaken frozen no yeah, no you, i don't think there's a frozen i don't think there's a frozen. no is there you, you get a little fire remember. i think you get frozen or something else I think you get fire. Yeah, you get fire. That's that like the thousand effect, more or less. You might get frozen, yeah. cause I, I know like the refrigerator or something, like, something freeze you or something that it's like another effect. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's a yeah, it's another effect that no other character has so far that they put in the world tour. So I think that's kind of like a quote unquote teaser on what mm. is the, the future characters could be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I- Aki would definitely be uh, an interesting, you know, concept. Cause people got their theories on what the character is gonna play like. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sure, uh, is she gonna be a charge character? Is she gonna be motions? Because uh, mm-hmm. that's what Fong mm-hmm. was. Fong was like a, a charge motion hybrid. Uh, yeah, hy- hybrid. So, and I'm just we just have to see. Cause if you also looked at her 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 trailer, well, the the world tour intro, she she had like different colored uh pouches yeah or something so i'm so, thinking what is that like the, different type of poison effects yeah that's what that mm. that's what i'm thinking it's like she has different type okay. of pills or something and the one she gives you specifically i feel like she gives you that oh. so you can get so you could be uh immune to her poison or something or like that's a part of the training oh wait so it's like how roses was with a car situation it drains like health or drains drive meter or something like that that could be an idea yeah, like different, like she, mm. like she might take a mid match, like she might eat them mid match to give her different effects. Mm. I think that'll be interesting. I think that'll be yeah. an interesting concept. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. like, mm. so it'll be kind of, kind of like be like Rose's card effect, but for her, she just eats a little small cocoa pebble looking, uh, <laughs> with chocolate chocolate ball looking things the, that B- she B- got. Um, you know, I don't the butter crisps. <laughs> <You're beyond laughs> the, the, the Butterfinger Chris. Yeah. <laughs> she eats those and uh, she gets the effects, the power up effects. So I'm I'm thinking like, okay, why does she have different colored pouches like which mm. each one does something specifically? So yep. yeah, that that I think that's I, I think that's kind of a good intro to the character. So we'll definitely be getting more in- information on her about soon. Uh, for sure, maybe like uh, we'll get it. Finally, get a gameplay reveal trailer for. Her oh yeah, we will. We will. The, yeah, yeah. Um, announce that in an event. Cause we have Gamescon that's happening this upcoming week. 
Um, and that's like a bigger game convention thing. I'm not sure if Capcom will be there, but then if not, then you know Tokyo Game Show in September. Yeah, yeah, especially at Tokyo Game Show, I could definitely mm-hmm, see that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, the world premiere of her uh, game yep, trailer yep, you know what? and yeah. stuff. I yep. could, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, like so, says, Scrub Taxes said, like, maybe she's maybe how Lily is, like, well, T Hawk, uh, that's a successor of a sort. So, yeah, well, I can see that too. Like, like that's pretty much like the biggest speculation is, like, you know, she's going to have, like, phone like abilities, but, uh, like, some twists, <laughs> literally, well, with that, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, because uh, so I'm kind of I'm kind of curious because, like, uh, in Street Fighter V for Fong, he got the, um, he got the air move, like his mm. air flying move, right, patched right. in later. Right. Like he didn't. He didn't have that move at launch. It got patched in. So I'm thinking that she'll have something definitely char- uh, more characteristic to that. Because mm-hmm. Fong was the whole cr- uh, crane type style. Yeah. Of mm-hmm. yeah, the bird. You know. You know. What I'm saying he so fly, fly like a bird. He says that when he does his super. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm thinking with uh, Aki, she does like you know more snake type, yeah, slithering, I'm... slithering movement. Like, what if she can like, uh, if you try to grab her, she could kind of like just slip out of your grab or something like that Wait, as a counter. Look, like that Tekken character in um, Tekken Eight that got revealed, the new character that she can like automatically counter and move away from all your attacks. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, what if she had something like that? Like she could just slide right you know under what? your legs or something when you try to grab her. You might be uh, onto it. Just, just, Shadow just Ace. be like slick, slick. <laughs> you might be onto a Shadow Ace. You might be on the money. Um, that, 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 the more you say, because he's like in the trailer when she moves towards you, it's like a snake-like movement. Yeah, and it's fast. It's like exactly. instant. Yeah, mm. it, was, it was almost like a jump scare. Type oh of god, thing. that thing that, it did yeah. creep me out. It did. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro, where does she go? How does she do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so, if, so if that's the case, if she has like that type of movement for her kit on top of uh, having poison, I think she'll be pretty good. I right. think she'll be pretty decent. Because you have to catch her. You know, if you're poisoned, you have to end up catching her. And that's she kind of just like, yeah. she kind of just like dash in or like dash to the other side of the screen and be like, hey, you got to catch me. You you right. got to come to me. Because the tattoo you know of Fong, right. Because the tattoo of Fong with, um, like, yeah, because he poisoned you and basically like drains your health. You got to hit him to stop it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. You basically can, yep. I can, oh my gosh, FTC Jesus. I can imagine that dude going to have a fun time. Running away, like, he's gonna have a field. He's gonna have a field day with that yep. character. <laughs> him and yeah, I can see him and other people, you know, trying her out. So yeah, we'll see. You know, she's definitely coming soon. We'll get more information in regards to that character, and uh, you know, hopefully somebody in make it might pick her up. So you guys can have an Aki no, down there. We we can. Yeah. Oh no no you know what no we need to learn a matchup because we know that no we got somebody that's gonna pick her up. But we need yeah, somebody, somebody down there is gonna play her for sure. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it in regards to that. So we're still on the topic of uh, Evo here. We talked about mm. the Aki reveal a little bit. Um, let's move over to uh, the commentary uh, at Evo. Um, mm. I think this was uh, this was a bit of a topic where uh, prior to uh, Evo, there was some there was a message that uh, James Chen was wasn't able to wasn't going to be commentating the finals and um you know some people were quote unquote happy that James Chen wasn't going to do it or they just weren't a fan of his type of style of commentary um and mm-hmm. as someone who has commentated you know I think this could be a pretty touchy subject uh for sure but first off before I before I dive in uh what do you would do you remember uh seeing a tweet Saying that uh, he wasn't, you know, he he was talking about people not being happy about him. I mean, he people being happy about him not commentating the finals. I remember that um, because, like I said, uh, it happened before at the CEO, but of course, it was a different game with um, Tekken. Um, there was a case where Iambic, uh, she was a new commentator that was picked for um, for um, T- Tekken. And I think someone like Spag or whoever else wasn't there, you know, there in Pick and said. I think Spag said something along the lines that was kind of like demeaning or that, well, it, it came out in a way that it sounded demeaning, but he tried not to like really bash on it. 
he basically because then he was like he was like hey you know I, where I got this new people here you know I want to see some old faces and whatnot and it wasn't fair it so because mm-hmm. thing is like you know a lot of people for example you know they say like James Chen they are so used to them and they like them a lot and they're like yo you know I like to um be you know, I like this I like this commentator you know and so forth you know doing for like twenty plus years why and then someone else comes out and like who's this person. I don't understand, like, where's Yipes? Where's this guy? Why are this person not here? Who are you? You know, are you... And then, like, you don't sound like this. You don't sound the same. Your commentary is not, you know, whatever. So, that really was, um... Yeah, interesting concept. So, as far as, like, it goes for Evo, you know, with James not getting picked, as far as the finals, it, like, people were... Foo boy, people were he tit, and I was like, part of me, how I feel about it, you know, I'm, I'm I, like, I at a certain point, like I said, we have Coach and Dogie, for example, in our area, for years they have commentated and so forth, and they always been picked for the most part to commentate events. Mm-hmm. As uh, shortly after the pandemic, it got to a point where you know, I was like, you know what? Let you know, let some new people show up, and I stop asking them. Now, person, now them personally don't mind; they're, they're okay with it. As opposed to something like Evo, you know, where you say you have the people who are used to Ultra David, James Chen, you know, that been there on the time to change that that tra- that traditionalism. I think I would call it. It mm-hmm. really like it, it upsets folks and shakes things up. And it's like, we hear this new person, you know, it's not the same. You know, you don't hear the James Chen puns. You don't hear the, you know, it's going to kill. You're, gonna, you're not going to hear, like, you know, how much knowledge and stories this person, James Chen, has versus, you know, the new person. The new person may not know all the players, whatever, but then it may turn out they may do. So mm-hmm. when it comes to that new person getting pit over the legacy, you know, like I said it disturbs like there's a disturbance in the force for the community. Mm. Now, why do you think it's always like a dog pal type of thing where hey, uh, like well, like you say, you know, this person, uh, this this ain't James Shin, this ain't the Yipes, this ain't you know Spaghetti Rip, this ain't you know Tasty Steve, this you know who are who are these people? You know, you you can't, you would see that a lot anytime a new commentator would step on to the the scene especially at uh higher higher profile events like who is this person right and right. at that time they're trying they they're trying to build their brand to try to get to that point uh with that serious professionalism so as someone you know as a commentator because you know i you know i commentate events too um but as so you know you've listened to your fair share of tournament commentary what do you I like what do you look for in your commentary uh, your commentary to be enjoyable? Like, mm-hmm. do you want someone who is always knowledgeable and serious about the game, who who just knows their frame data, who knows to call out specific points and stuff like that, or would you prefer like a, a goofy slapstick catchphrase type? Oh my God, that was a a, a pizza combo. Uh, you know, you get the one topping pizza. With the the breadsticks for for nine ninety nine type combo or you know something crazy like that, um, like what what type of style do you prefer to listen to as a as a, a uh, spectator? For me, you know personally, I it can be a balance of both. Like you can be entertaining and you can be knowledgeable. Like the so, but the thing is though, like I said, I commentate myself and I don't feel as comfortable commentating in comparison to someone like you no know, and our end. Doggy and co- coach and whatnot, because they have the legacy, they have the knowledge and everything. They can conduct themselves well on it. At the same time, it's where I have to really kind of like consider, like you know, hey, uh, will I, you know, if what if they're not there anymore? Then who's going to step up? And then there are people that have lately been trying to be on the mic, and they're not going to always, you know, mm-hmm. get. They're not, and a lot of people that go and try to go on the mic or ask them when they go on the mic, they're like, I'm not sure, and so forth. But thanks to Coach, who was willing to allow new people to go on the mic, the thing he gives them as advice is like, just talk about the game. Like, you don't have to know everything about the game, just talk about it. 
you know, if you don't know mm-hmm. what's going on, understand, you can do, you can ask questions in the middle of the match. Like, hey, is that safe? Or well, who's this character? Or who's this player? And so forth. That's still commentary in itself. A lot of people mm-hmm. look at commentary as like you have to know everything beforehand. Mm-hmm. When a lot of times, no, normally, when especially you start out, you don't, you won't know everything. Like Street Fighter Six, obviously, since that's recently new, I already knew that a lot of people don't try. Even the p- legacy people who try to commentate, they're not going to know everything. Even if they read up or saw the videos beforehand before they first commentated, they're not going to know everything. They're not gonna know if something's plus four. They're not gonna know if that's safe on block or you know all that type of stuff. Or this player does this for a certain reason, or that was the purpose of this attack or whatever. But Mm -hmm. you know, so that's the thing is where you know it can. um, It basically is the fact that when it comes to commentating, just talk about the game. You know, don't just go off topic like you know because like um, actually it was episode that. Shout out to Paintbot. He did a podcast episode himself about commentary, and he t- criticized how people would talk about something else other than the game. And that's mm. the biggest thing. He talked about the game, like you know, you know, he said, "Hey, well, DJ did this spin kick move, and it hit, and this person flew back and knocked down, and he that chased after the, uh, this character here, and did an uppercut, whatever, and it hit. I think you know." It's, and so it's okay to say that, hey, you know, I don't know what move that, that is. I don't know what the frame data that is. I don't know if it's safe or not. The crowd in general will might look at you and be like, you don't know what you're talking about, so why are you on the mic? But that's the, the problem is that the standard of for what they see is that someone is always knowledgeable as a commentator. When the truth mm-hmm. is, you won't know everything. So, But you talk about the game, talk about what's going on, and keep that will be should be enough to keep people engaged, because that's what's supposed to be, you know that's the, the idea that's the concept of what the commentator should be. That's the rule of the, com, uh, the commentator main rule is the game itself. Focus on what's going on. Let's say mm-hmm. mean mispronounce a person's name. Correct if you can if need be, just make sure you correct yourself. You may not know this move. If find out what it is later, you know because like I said, especially if something that's new. So. And if you're new to it altogether, you know, just say, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, um, whatnot. So that's like a tip of, uh, of how to deal with that for being a commentator. And also, too, for the people who are used to seeing people who are knowledgeable, you can't assume they're going to know everything. So mm-hmm. when it comes to that point, though, when you have a new commentator come on and to replace uh, someone who no, you're, you're used to, you can't judge them and be like they don't know nothing because they might know more than the legacy play legacy commentator than you ever realize, and they like know everything by heart, know every single detail about the game more than get you have to imagine. So as far mm. as as the commentator themselves talk about the game and just you know talk about what's going on, even though don't understand it yet, and that's okay. As far as the audience, let those new people come in and talk about it. If they're not talking about the game at all, then yes, criticize them about that. Definitely. Though, know, if you're talking about somebody's wedding or pizza or, you know, I went to the bathroom today type of thing over the game, then yes, that's the problem. But if they're talking about the game and like, hey, I don't know what move this is or whatever, you can't be like, oh my gosh, you don't know what this is. And James Chen would have knew better if he was on the bike. And No. Just let them get a feel for it. Welcome them back. I I well to to add on to your point, I think it uh it varies. Right, right, right. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it it varies. Um, if you are a professional, I mean, if you're well, I mean, it's there's levels to it. There's levels to it. There's it depends on like if you if you're hired to do commentary for an event, you mm-hmm. know, the event expects you to be professional, right, it expects right. you to have professional commentary. So if you go into an event 
and have uh you know poor performance and it's just you know you're off topic there's a lot of dead air and stuff right, um, right. then that's then, you know that's definitely an issue you know people won't wouldn't want to listen to something like that that's correct um, especially especially if it's a paid position too as mm-hmm, well mm-hmm. so um i think there's definitely levels to it as far as acceptable commentary mm-hmm. um for sure and if you it, I enjoy a good balance. I like a good mix of humor and knowledge to the game. Correct. Because if you can do both, if you have both in your pocket, you will definitely go far. You'll right. definitely go far in commentary. Because not only are you giving a professional analysis, but you're also adding in a little bit of the humor to try to make the commentary interest versus like if somebody like the, the droning, I, I call it quote unquote drone type of commentary where mm. people just like super super niche and like just like a robot they sound like a robot um Uh, like you get like somebody calls you like a telemarketer calls you and then you get the ai voice or something they sound like that 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 type of commentary is like kind of dry to me like i want a little bit of spice to the to it right um so you could have fun with it but at the same time just keep your professionalism Right, right. With it, and uh, you, you know, you're good to go. You, I think you, I think you'd be good in anybody's book, right? Uh, for sure. But if somebody's constantly goofing around, not talking about the game, not talking about the match, constantly going off topic and stuff like that, it can at at that point it can be uh, it can kind of suck, you know? Right. It can definitely it can definitely suck, and that's not something you would want to listen to. But if you have a good balance of both of those things, you'll go far. I yeah. think you'll definitely go far. I think I was, yeah. Uh-huh. I think I was looking at the general scale of things a little bit bes- c- c- comparison to uh, uh, instead of like the more specific of like a setting of like Evo or CEO or whatever. Like you know, pretty much the the top of the, you know. yeah. So I, I probably was a little more, um, yeah, I was a little more too general versus specific. But yeah, I think the same. It's still the same. Yeah, but yeah, you're right though. Um, like having that balance, like in a professional, more professional, like getting paid for at Evo, for example, you know, as a person, I, by then, yeah, certain some, some type of knowledge should be already set and established, and and then mm-hmm. like the humor part, like I said, you know, how you can con- conduct the humor, combine the humor with it, and yeah. I, even then, especially with someone else, like say yeah, uh, Chris was saying, you know, having multiple people, like you have two people, example, is like having that chemistry too, because. Um, I heard that some people they are they like to commentate with somebody that they're good friends with, for example, because they can know they can make it more like a natural conversation yeah. versus like it's a script. Like yeah, say this first, then this person can say this, and then you say this, then you say that. But if you, you know be more natural about it as well, um in in addition to the professionalism and whatnot, that really helps a more natural flow and that engagement feels more natural and i think like even said for a newcomer for over a legacy person if having that type of skill and the criteria you know as a criteria for um being a professional evo like commentator you know definitely because you want to make sure that you have that voice and have that knowledge enough to say give that audience understanding and what was going on and then say have the humor if you want to have Say okay, yeah, you know this is funny. You know, doing the way that it's hilarious, or you know, it makes the audience relax and they feel comfortable. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, someone like dead airs or someone doesn't know what's going on. You know, and I think, like I said, I was thinking too much of the general end, of the scale of things versus the more specific, like paid up, like professional end. But yeah, even then, like I said, this is even for those who are want to get into commentary. To get to that point, they might want to get paid for Evo or CEO, whatever major event. You know, initially you're not going to know everything, but you will, uh, as a criteria for the professional end, d- definitely start learning the game. You know, play the game a bit. You know, understand the details, understand as specifically as possible as you can, and you know, find your own voice within it though, and find a way to add a humor that you know. You make people feel comfortable and enjoy it and have a good time, but also like, okay, they're knowledgeable. They hey, hey what's going on? So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, for, you got to find your own style. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to make your own highlights. You know, it's time to heat up. So when you're on the <laughs> mic, 
You just gotta you just gotta go with it, man. It's just <laughs> the thing where it's just a natural it's, it just comes naturally, like especially if you've done it for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, I know people people got you know questions about well, why does this person always get to commentate this event and stuff like that? You have to think about it. These are companies that have been working with them for years yeah. on events. So if you think about it, why why would I bring in somebody new when I have this person who's capable of doing that? If I take a chance on somebody's new and they go live and they mess up then that's going to be, you know, on me, you know, that's going to be on the company uh, for them to do that. So that's why there's kind of like the seniority thing as far as commentary goes. Right, right, right. And it, it is, it is, I will say in certain positions, it is difficult for newer commentators to come in because mm-hmm. if you don't have a resume on events you've commentated before in our past, then more than likely you're not going to get picked for right, commentary right. At, at major. So that's why when you, when people do apply for commentary at events, they ask for that wheel. Well, where's your commentary reel? Uh, what events have you worked with before? Mm-hmm. What you know, have you worked with any brands and stuff? Like, who are you? Can you market yourself? So there's a lot of things that are going on versus people saying, "Hey, I just want to jump on a mic and talk." It is. It's just not at a certain level. It's not that simple, right? You know, there's definitely levels to it. I mean, you can commentate your local because you know you look, you know your local people. They right. know you, so hey, you're good. Yeah, let them hop on the mic, let them talk and stuff. But if you want to build a brand, you got to think about going to that next level, and that next level is pushing yourself and you know marketing yourself to be open to commentate different events and stuff. So I think that is something a key point in as far as what's acceptable on commentary too as well because again everyone has their own style and you know brand that they have when they're speaking but that's just my personal preference on like mm-hmm. what i'd like to listen to as a commentator right. i like someone who is uh who's knowledgeable but can throw in some jokes here and there and you know that i think that makes for a good balance like mm-hmm. i wouldn't want to listen to somebody that's like a drone like a head like a robotic like no soul Based commentary is just like really dry. Oh yes, that was a very good move. They did uh, perform there. They did the heavy punch mm-hmm, into the crouching mm-hmm. punch. You know what I'm saying? Like a robot. Right, like, right. like bro, where's your soul at? There's no seasoning. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody that can express themselves through the mic. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I know it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but that's just my personal preference of what I like to listen to. Mm-hmm. But as far as you know, people getting into commentary, it's not hard. And I don't, I don't think getting into commentary is hard it's just about performing is the is the hard part like there's opportunities for people to to commentate it's just that are you willing to commit to the craft are you willing to be a commentator anybody can say they're a commentator for an event but at a certain level are you going to put are you are you going to be able to perform when the time comes that's the that's a good question so so circle all of this around back to the uh, the James Chin thing where he mentioned that he knows that his style isn't for everybody and everybody isn't going to like what he says on the, the commentary. He's aware of that, but he's still going to keep doing his thing. So if someone's not a fan of your style, um, you know, you, you just... Don't don't let that shut you down. You know, don't let that stop you from, you know, doing your craft because it's not going to be for everybody. You're not you're not going to be everyone's favorite commentator. So at the end of the day, you just do your thing. You know, that, I think that pretty much sums it up. As long as a company is willing to hire you and you're not saying anything, you know, that hmm. could get you cut off of the air, you know, cut off or canceled or whatever. Right. I think you're, you know, you're good to go. You're doing your job. You know, you, you're talking about the game. You're talking about the event. You just do your thing. So, yeah, that that pretty much would circle around to uh, getting that taken care of. So, just before we wrap up that topic, uh, Retro, do you have anything else you want to to add on to it? Um, no, he pretty much nailed the nailed it on the head too. But like, yeah, I said I was speaking on more of a general end. But I think, like I said, it started out with like a uh, local to kind of find your craft. And then go from there to learn more about the game and learn about what you want to talk about and basically build the knowledge around it, you know, build the knowledge with it. And then, of course, you know, whatever you think consistently hits well, the jokes wise with the people, whatnot, definitely, you know, 
craft it. It's like even you know, being a comedian. You know, like I said, you not you gonna start out. If, you know, eventually you will get to if you want to. You want to get to the point that um, you will get to the point where you know you want to become like more professional. Like I said, get paid and whatnot. Um, but like I said, it will come with a territory. You know, with like, hey, you gotta have these type of steps and have to know what you're talking about. You gotta have this type of craft, you have the resume, background, whatever. You know, because like I said, they're not gonna pay you know anybody just to get on the mic. They want to make mm-hmm. sure the people who knows what they're doing and then has been doing it for a while and so forth. And I said, and I said, you no, know, cause like I said, it's pretty much like the people who got pit over James Chen. I mean, at that point, they already been doing stuff. They already, you know, been working their craft and everything like that. They had their commentary reels. They had their, you know, craft and stuff done. And as a parent, because otherwise, like I said, James Chen probably would have been at top of six again. Uh, if so, and Ultra David, whoever else. So apparently, Catcom or whoever oversees that you no know, mm. um, pick, they say, okay, well, let's see. This person, they did this for years and years and years. They um, commentate here and there. They did this major, whatever. They did a good job. You know what? Cool. We'll give them a chance. You know. So I said, it's gonna take it's gonna take time. But like I said, for those who are coming into it initially. I said, find mm-hmm. that craft, and you know, when you, get, you want to get to that point, you know, that's just advice to find that craft, find get that knowledge though, study on it, build, you know, that humor, you know, you know, mold it, and then we get to that point where if you, hey, when by the time by the time it's like, hey, I got my commentary reel, here's my resume, boom, mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, it's just like. Um... It's like a job, you know. Mm-hmm. If you if you think about it, it's nonprofit. It can, well, it can be nonprofit, um, or you get paid for it. So it's uh, it's it's you know, depending on which gig you're working, um, and there are a lot of expectations in regards to, I don't know, being on time for events and, and you know things like that. And over time, with experience, you can you can be solid on the mic, man. You know, yeah. It just like it just takes somebody who you know. Who does commentary? You could talk to them for some pointers. Um, if you work with people, they can help you. Um, you know, quote unquote, carry you on the on the mic. You know what I'm saying? They could they could feed off of what you may be weak on, and then they can work with you after the event to to help your commentary improve. But again, yep, just to circle back around one more time to that uh, what we originally talked about. You know, commentary is just going to be different for uh, for everyone. You know, everyone's not going to like the same commentator, um, and that's fine. You know, as long as you are dedicated to your craft and you are putting in work, um, and you have your own specific thing going on, and you're talking about the game, and you're being a professional, mm-hmm. you're good to go. I mean, if you're not doing any of that stuff then your credit as a commentator is going to hurt. But at the same time, like, yo, you have to make sure your commentary is definitely going to be on point if you're looking to get into something big for this. You know, commentating a local versus commentating a major mm-hmm. is two different is this is two different worlds. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is it is it is definitely uh two different worlds. So you know, I've done I've done plenty of locals. I, you know, I've done a couple of I've done a major here or there. Um, here, so uh, as far as the experience goes, it's just natural, man. You know, just talk talk about the game, talk about what's going on, and like you said, you mentioned Coach earlier. You know, Coach and Doggy are definitely one of the veterans, uh, the uh, veteran duo here in Georgia. These guys have been doing it, doing that for a long time. So right. you know, I kind of take my inspiration from them. Um, as far as just let, let things flow natural. So just like he, like coach say, you know, talk about what you see on screen, talk about what's happening in the match. And if you got somebody that's good with you, they could definitely, uh, oh, yeah. you know, help you out, help you out to carry you. So yeah, that, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. So in regards to that, uh, move on to the next topic, uh, here is going to be the post evil COVID report. So this is something that I, uh, wanted to, to, to talk about too. It's kind of a, Maybe a sensitive subject, simply because it has to do with vaccination and people mm-hmm. catching COVID at Evo. Um, you know that those posts were gonna come out eventually, where people saying that yeah, I caught I caught 
COVID at Evo. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling too great. You know, you should get tested and stuff like that. And this kind of, you know, when in a, at an event with over, you know, 11K people in attendance, I mean, <laughs> what, what, what can I say? You know, you know that, that was definitely bound to happen. You know, the vaccination, vaccinated people versus and the unvaccinated people. So it's just... What are your what are your thoughts about like safety being safety safe, well, excuse me safety at majors? Because um, now I don't want to say people are brushing it off, but it's like they're comparing it to a common cold, and I'm like, well, you know, eventually you're gonna catch it. I'm like, bro, nobody wants to catch it. Bro. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, yo, get out of here with that. Right. So you know that mentality towards that is kind of different, and you know we still are living in the COVID pandemic, right. so. What are your thoughts about how, uh, you know, what are, you, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, to be honest, like, I think, like I said, I think we got, in general, we got more loose with the thing because it hasn't been much of a case in many cases in a while, for a while. And then even with the tournaments, like, beforehand, like CEO and Come Break or whatnot, just unfortunately, like I said, the virus pretty much um, still around and still basically upgrading itself in many ways so it, it, the only thing is like i you know we have to be still be more cautious you know me and myself have to wear masks just trying to have to still enforce the rules on it more you know i i can't it's not it, it can be easy to say shame on you know the tos and shame on the people there that didn't put the say wear masks and all that stuff you know because basically with the aftermath, a lot of people are like, yeah, I got it. Hey, y'all guys, make sure you guys get tested. Make sure you guys are good and so forth. You know, because, you know, unfortunately, Rick, had, the the hodl had it himself too, you know. Mm. And, I, and I'm not sure I've seen it in my end, but I haven't really seen anyone bash him to death. Like, how dare you um, allow people to not wear masks and, blah, 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 and so forth you know, on that end. And then I didn't see the other end, like, fighting back. So... I think a lot of people are aware collectively, thankfully within the community at least, that like, okay, you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, you know, it's a little more safe, safer than before, but right now, it's pretty much is in a sense where we need to start wearing masks and stuff again, at least, if not, you know, with the vaccine and all that type of stuff for various reasons. And, but still getting tested, so I said, I still think like having tests and have a mask beforehand, and especially a bigger event at, at a larger scale is definitely needed. Because, like I said, that was a global event, so really, it's really going to be it'd be hard to try to contain, you know, and make it where no one can go out, they'll come out unscathed from the getting the virus. So, the, but I think just from that point on, it's like you know, even in smaller places like locals, and whatnot. You know, hey, hey, just say, hey, wear a mask. Um, make sure you get tested a few days beforehand. Make sure you're good. That's it. You know, just pretty much go back to, you know, not square one per se, but like to that step. Now, mm. yeah, I mean, I think that should be like uh, kind of like a muscle memory type of thing. Where now, mm. where you're at, when you're at a public, of, uh, you know, large public event and gathering around people and stuff to you know routinely try to take a uh, a covid test here right and, right you know here and there but the fact that i just don't like the fact that people was like you know brushing it off saying oh man you know you, you'll just get it eventually you might as well just you know get it over with i'm like bro this thing has nothing this is not even close to getting a common cold you know mm-hmm. this this I is just to. this I mean, this thing could shut your whole system down. So, you know, I think that's <laughs> that's more than what a common cold can do, you know. So it's it's definitely something to just take note of. Um, of course, the social distancing thing is always still a thing. I mean, even when I went to um, – which event was that? I had my mask on. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of was, like, washing my hands frequently and stuff, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. uh, just trying to be, you know, secure. Yeah, and with an event mm-hmm. like that, especially on Evo, like everyone's close together, you know, everyone's, you know, people aren't wearing masks and stuff. It's kind of like a, a icky thing. There was actually a time and period during the start of the pandemic where I had to, I, you know, I did the mo- majority of my grocery shopping. I had to do, I did it through Instacart. I was like, well, I couldn't, I, I didn't really trust, you know, 
going out in public like that for the first few months until I had to get comfortable with like, all right, well, I'm going out to the store with a mask on, you know, and it's just that type of thing can kind of create an anxiety, especially in public, mm -hmm. uh, you know, public places too as well. And that could also be like a thing where if I go out, what if I go to this event and then a few days later, I'm not feeling too great, right? You shrug it off. You're like, okay, well, maybe it's just I'm having a light headache or something. You don't think about it too much. And then further down the line, it kind of progresses. And then now it's at the point where, oh, man, okay, let me take a test. So you take a test, then you find out, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, I tested positive for COVID. I went, to the, I went to this big local with a lot of people, around a lot of people. Um, I guess I should tell everybody, right? You know, so it's just... It's just a thing where, you know, public safety is uh, that that that's kind of one of the things that we need to start going back to doing, um, especially at events where, you know, masks are mandatory. I know people was like, yeah, well, I don't want to wear a mask. You know, I don't want to wear I don't feel comfortable wearing it. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like we're going out there. I feel like it's going to go back to that square one where the first few months of COVID before the pan, you know, when the pandemic broke out. So. I, I don't know, man. I'm 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 looking at these uh I caught COVID posts and uh yeah, that that's kind of a concern going forward, especially at big events. But uh what do you think, Retro? Yeah. Um well, I said for someone who actually did get COVID um fortunately last year, um in our own local and it was a big local too. You know, like I said I think I just to test one like it's I it, I think it overall should be enforced, especially when it comes to larger events. Um, but even with local, small locals and whatnot, I still think like we should enforce it more. I said we just got more loose with it. Um, yeah, I think I think what it was is um, the comfort level started to come back a little bit. You know, we started to get a little bit more closer mm -hmm. uh, to one another, and you know, we stopped wearing the mask, and you know, I started. I, I even started to see the hand sanitizers disappear. Um, at tournaments where before they had them at almost every station now it's like they're gone and i'm like okay all right well i think we i think we should get comfortable because uh it is definitely still out there and it's also like new variants or something um to that effect that's going around so uh yeah it's that that could i, I didn't want to really like bring that up because this is kind of that's why i said this is like a sensitive subject um but, right right yeah it's it, it should definitely be something that could be that should be considered if you're going to events um of that nature i mean everybody still wants to play games and press buttons and stuff but we got to be more careful about how we're going to go about that uh for sure if you're attending those events right so right. so yeah so yeah that was that was probably it in regards to uh, you know, the Evo there, the post Evo we had, um, was there anything you, else you wanted to talk about retro before you move on from, uh, from Evo? Um, nope, that's mainly it. Like I said, overall, the, as a viewer, I'll say I'm very, I want to go next year. Um, the way it, it production and everything wise about it, like it really wants you to go once you, and well, it really makes you want to go next year. And it, oh man, it was like, it was great watching it. It felt refreshing. And I said, shout out to the hot of, you know, like I said, unfortunately with the COVID part happened, but you know, even then, you know, with the overall event, how it came about, came through, you know, it was, oh man, it was great. Cause I, I went to 2018 Evo. That was an amazing experience for sure already. And I would like to go back. Mm. Oh, no, for sure, man. Uh, for sure. It's just like uh, those those offline tournaments. I mean, outside of just playing the game, there are other events and things you can do uh, within the area. And, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. if you're with the, if you're with the right crowd, that even amplifies it you oh, know, even yeah. more. You know what I'm saying? You're going out there with the homies. You guys eating great food. You're watching a good show here and there and, uh, on top of just the tournament. So, yeah, that type of experience, man, I I, I appreciate that uh, even more. So, yeah, that, that, that's basically it, guys. If you're going out to those particular events, just please be safe as possible. I know it's yeah. it, uh, it's kind of it's kind of difficult, but those steps can at least help prevent it 
uh for sure if you like just be a little bit more cautious you know i, I was seeing uh <laughs> i'm sorry do i have to call this out but you know it was an event where you know i was using the restroom and somebody just immediately walked out the stall and just went right back into the venue and uh you know it mm. uh i, I kind of stared at him for a little bit i didn't say anything which i should have said something but you know that's just something that did happen and uh that that kind of cemented my legacy of uh you know i'm i'm not gonna be not not a germaphobe but at the same time it's no, like I, all no, right, I'm, right i'm gonna just be taking caution that's all yep that yeah that, that's all but yeah let's we're gonna move on to a uh, another topic here and we're gonna we're gonna revisit this we're gonna revisit a that, well this topic but we're going to revisit modern controls i know we talked about that um in our previous episodes about how like players feeling about that but mm -hmm. it's it's modern controls are you know for street fighter 6 is kind of it's kind of out there you know you, you know you kind of starting to you notice a little bit of something about you know some modern controls and i'm starting to become a believer in the power of modern controls sir retro let me tell you a story about a modern marissa named shuto that's tell you a story about a modern marissa I named the name shuto. but go on easily one of the strongest marissa players out there but mm. they use modern <laughs> oh. they did one of the strongest marissas out there but they're using modern and then of course you had hatani with the modern chun um there's also like modern some modern lily players uh i saw ryu cami uh geef like these players i might actually have to do two separate tier lists now that i think about it because hmm. uh one, one for classic and then one for modern because i think modern controls uh you know i think they're pretty good man i know it's not everyone's cup of tea mm -hmm. and they might not look too look too fondly on you know using modern controls but i think uh i think there's something there in modern controls and i was just messing around with certain characters and stuff and i'm like being able to have an instant reaction button press on something especially like a one button svd or a one button dp mm -hmm. or uh instant uh, instant ac access level three just pressing down in two buttons is kind of ridiculous i ain't gonna lie but talk to me talk to me retro how you feel about metro uh, modern controls yeah. well i think I, I actually got a video of it as proof because um as of um last week no earlier this week or last week or whatever um our best lily player and he actually trying to spread the gospel of it trying to convince me to go modern because he's a modern lily now Tato? yes hey <laughs> hey i'm gonna message him i'm gonna message him yeah <laughs> i said I, hey man i, I wish you could pop up right here right now yeah because like yeah so then i play with him and he like you should try modern i like what like you should, you should try modern like that's what he said in the chat in the street fighter 6 chat and i'm like he saw the light and so he saw the i light, played yeah. against him i looked up and i saw modern lily i like Oh, oh my God! He's choosing violence. He's choosing now, violence, but, but yo, it's, it's decent. It's I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go no, you good. No, you good. Like so, the thing is, I didn't know too much of a. It wasn't too much of a difference though. Like he's good regardless. Because mm. and the thing is, the only thing about it, his reactions to do certain moves are slightly quicker, and like mm -hmm. the command grab, like. It makes the command grab scenario when he gets close by after using the wind um chomp winds power ups and stuff. Yeah. And I so the thing is unless I constantly at bat dash and buffer that as soon as he's done with the, he's safe on block, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, I get I got command grab. A, a little bit more. A little bit. A little bit more. But when I started noticing that, I started bat dashing ahead of time like timing it and stuff and i start jumping away so i started you no know, i defeated the allegations a little bit but yeah mm. however however yes so my i actually have a video proof of it the experience and he was like kurt you should try modern i'm like nah i can't because if for me i'm not sure i i know the list though that um dj loses certain moves but i like i couldn't I can't. Like, personally, I cannot go into the modern world. 
Because me, it don't feel weird. Yeah. If, for me, it, it, it does. It does feel weird. Right. It's super weird. Now, yeah. granted, I'll know that I can, hey, level one, level two, whatever, super <sighs> as much quickly as possible. Mm. That feels amazing to react that quick. Mm. Props to the modern people. Props to y'all. It's not for me. However, like I said, mm. when going back to that uh, example between either Punk or someone um, versus Victory, uh, Victrix of Corey Bell using a Zangief against Luke, where the modern Zangief basically it made the matchup feel easier for that character against Luke versus trying to deal with a you know classic version of Zangief because you didn't have to worry about SPDs and 360s and all that stuff. You can just press the button, command grab, boom. Like, it's right then and there. It's a little bit more... But then, like I said, the thing about it is it's still a little bit more work. It's still... Mm-hmm. You have to do a lot more stuff for the modern and, and for the work or whatnot. But it's the reaction that kind of helps make up for it. So the balance is, is, is a balance of a sort. Which, that's mm-hmm. why I don't personally mind it. Is that, as a result, though, with a little bit less tools and unique moves and stuff like that, it actually makes it a little more telegraph of what you're trying to go for because you know that, hey, I can press the button and react on time or if I have a command grab thing, I'm going to try to go for this almost all the time. Uh, it's going to be a pattern like, oh, I'll start backdashing. I'll start jumping. I'll still do whatever. You know, it changed the strategy a little bit, granted. So as far as I, it goes, no, I'm still not against, I'm, I still don't want to bash on modern because um, mm-hmm. the, the thing about it, Street Fighter Six situation is still better what they do in the Grand Blue, where literally there's the option to take away the traditional inputs in that in the new Grand Blue Rising. Like it's like because it's the same now. Like the damage is the same, everything like the same. You just get faster reactions with the simple inputs. But they say, you know what? It doesn't matter anymore. In addition, get rid of the traditional inputs as an option. That's scarier mm. than the dealing with having a modern in a situation and saying, okay, well, modern gets less damage, but you get faster reactions. You can do this quicker. You get easy to combo. You can do this and that. And you still do the traditional inputs to still maintain the properties of that. You know, that still sounds scary. But to me, it's like, you know, if still the same strategy of defeating Lily, defeating whatever character you're playing against is still the same, mm. it doesn't change. Like, if you're gonna try to go always go in for a command grab, even though it's quicker, quote unquote, like I'll just bat dash and I'll still punish you. Like, it doesn't bother me. Mm. That's all I say. So modern people, yeah, you got it. I mean, because like I said we have a bunch of Japanese players that are using modern. Pro mm. Japanese players using modern. So mm. it's not the new players, newcomers that or novice players that are trying to get into it. You see the pro players using it. So it's yeah. I mean, not to Chris' point, it could be a, it's a problem in the in the sense, but I want to I'm being the devil's advocate to you, Chris, because I understand the pain as a classic man, but classic man. <laughs> <laughs> that be, I like that. I like that. that. Be, <laughs> to this point, okay, <laughs> he says poor child. <laughs> yes. Oh now, my god. Oh, that's right. Poor Chop suffered so much against modern. It, yeah, yeah. He he. Still, the twenty. Oh, is it like I dealt with super well, one button supers the, to the point? I mean, the thing is, I'm like, I just press buttons that not gonna make them react that quick for it. I mean, <laughs> they can try. Like, I'm just changing my strategy. I, I adaptable. That's what I'm saying. It's this. It's uh. It's definitely an interesting uh. Interesting topic, uh. For sure, because there's definitely like a split decision on well split, uh. Thing on how people feel overall about it, but it's I think like well like you said it's more on a comfort level. Mm-hmm. Um. It's just like your your brain is like kind of fine tuned into just like using classic inputs because you've been doing it for years and when you have to break into 
or even switch between two and from from modern to classic. It could kind of be like a muscle memory type of deal because there were interests where you know I would be playing with modern and I try to do like some some classic stuff and it just I'm like oh why is it not working and then I realize oh snap I'm using modern mode and then I you know I'm already lost around. So it's mm-hmm. it's I I think. It just needs more time, but it's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun thing. Um, as far as using it in tournament, I don't think I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I think I'm definitely going to be sticking with classic input, but just something to mess around with. As far as modern, and you said Shato uh, is uh, willing is going full modern now with his Lily. <laughs> hey, he to spread yo, that <laughs> man might be dangerous. He might be dangerous. I mean, he, he, they, the thing is, he's dangerous enough as a classic. Yeah. Well, we're using Lily in classic. I mean, because the thing is that you know, shoot, the the amount of times that you deal with Lily and and so forth, but like I said, some reason will it change that Lily going to still be will Lily get out of the allegations of being low tier considered considered low tier? Because that's what the thing is. Even no matter what, they could a lot of people still consider Lily as low tier character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you um. Uh... You know, we have a you I think we have a little tier list uh that I prepped beforehand for the for the podcast if you wanna go ahead and bring that up now that you mentioned the uh, Lily being low tier. Um and we know this is current as of uh, August nineteenth, twenty twenty three. You know, the tier list will constantly I feel like the tier lists are ch- constantly changing with this game because it's so new and people are in like all over the place where they're trying to figure out which character is this. But I think a few characters in the game are definitely had their spots solidified as being like really, really good and like you don't see their spots changing anytime soon. So if we take a look at the board here, uh yeah, we can see what this is just my my opinion, um, on what I would see as far as a tier list for the character. I mean again, everybody has their own opinion. But as it stands right now, these are like this this is like my definitive uh, Taylor, Sir Retro's may be different. Mm-hmm. FGC Chris's might be different. Ghost, uh, tier list might be different. Um, you know, if you're listening, you're re- you're listening to this live, or you're listening to the rebroadcast, your mm-hmm. your list might be different. But I think that's a good thing because the meta is like slowly starting to change and develop over time. Uh, we just recently had what uh, was his name, Aniki, who won the uh the world warrior japan event mm-hmm, the cbt mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. uh kimberly yep so you yeah know, it, it, mm. you know kimberly was a character that kind of like fell fell off a little bit on the side once the game started to develop a little bit more mm-hmm. um, and people started to figure out how to fight her a bit better yep she i remember she was a uh, one of the number one complaints Yes. Like, well, top five complaints when the game first came. Oh, Kimberly's broken. She's this, this, this. She did lose some things, but she's still a valuable character, uh, for sure. Uh, there. But I think if she had that, there, if she still had the, you know, the EX wake up Tatsu, she'd still be ridiculous. But um, the this that just goes to show you, man, that people are still putting in characters. I mean, people can still put in work with characters. I think this game is. Balance as b- balance to the point where it's potential that every character can win at a certain level. So, example, if somebody was playing Sim and they automatic and they won like a big uh, regional event, or big local event, then you're gonna start seeing posts saying that it's Sim top tier. I like I knew Sim was top tier this whole time, and you know, <laughs> you know this. This, that, and the third, and if somebody won with Geef, you know, you start to see that. Heck, heck your uh, you, the, the the reboot anniversary event had two Geefs in top three. So yeah, well, you know, yeah, look, it just goes to show you that you know it can anything can happen, man. Like any anything can happen. But I think those characters, the characters that I have listed in the S tier, are definitely the more solidified, solid choice. Oh yeah. Like, you know what? Like if you're playing those characters, like you can't go wrong because they have such few weaknesses and they take full advantage of the game's mechanics, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. So benefit from them. And, yeah, and everybody, everybody else, it's they're in good spots, but it could be a toss up. Those, I think, those positions could kind of like interchange a little bit. But as far as the the S, the S is kind of up there. You know, Luke is ridiculous. Jury's out there. You know, Ken doing his damn thing. 
Cammy, Gal, you know, JP. So, you know, those characters are pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just, but that's just, again, that's just in my opinion. Some people might be like, oh, why you got JP up there? JP ain't like that. Okay. So, so to hey. add to your yeah. point, because I'm not sure you saw throughout the Evo tournaments, uh, everybody was like, I lost to a JP, I lost to a JP, I lost to a JP. Like, it was so many people, top players lost to JP. <laughs> they got eliminated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this, that character is is. I feel like with that character, there's no real concrete way to fight him. And when I say that, I mean game plan wise, just based off how the character is designed. So if you look at JP's design, it's like he has this whole. He can have a whole zoning. Uh, his his whole his whole kit is based around zoning. So. With that being said, if this man jabs you three times and sends you full screen with a special move, you got to go back and guess all the way again, you know, because his 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 crouch and light punch has such really good range that if you try to meet him and you get interrupted, you got to go back to square one and go through the whole mini game of just trying to get in on this character. Not to mention that he also has a teleport, too. So if he wants, he can set up a trap and then teleport away. Mm-hmm. And then you can start the whole chase all over again. Well, yeah, then you also don't forget, too, you have a JP that parry you 32 times. <laughs> You know, you know, it's just that, that's just another layer, layer was, on top of it. Gosh, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah, having those perfect parries, man. He's man. This man. He said, "I came to win this. I came to win this bread." That man, <laughs> Kakaru, like, shout out to him though. Like that was like, but like I said, that's the that's like the thing is that it's it's, it's interesting because like you know JP's he he the, the, the design of him makes him seem like he's this boss character. Which we'll get into later, but um, that's the thing. It's like you know, I'm glad they kind of made it where that character new and so forth is that type of threat. But dang, it's like he's that much of a threat. And like I said, looking at the rest of the list, yeah. Oh, of course, Luke. The the funny now, Luke was hilarious to me because I remember at the end of Street Fighter Five and Street Fighter Six coming out, everyone thought that Luke was gonna be like. You know, maybe mid tier best or whatever, because you know he's a new character and the main character of this one. You know, Luke was super crazy good at the end of Street Fighter Five. They're gonna nerf him in this feature with all the new mechanics. He ain't that great. We're not gonna worry about him. And I'm like, I should play the demo a little bit more, because when he came out and people started figuring out, seeing, start seeing how Luke is, Luke still got all the great tools. Of a Shoto, mm-hmm. and even more, and got all the plus frames. He got good well, setups. He can his fireball game is ridiculous. Like I said, that's basically a guile with if guile was a Shoto is the best description. That's that's scary. Guile's good enough on his own and with his defense, but have a guile like character that now is also part Shoto too. That's yeah. scary. That's really yeah, scary. Luke, Luke. Yeah, Luke. Uh, Luke is something else in this game, man. He's definitely a knowledge check character, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he has a, the advancing normals that just kind of just push you back. His crouch and jab is like really good, and that can link to like really good damage uh, too as well. I mean, he, he has the answer to literally everything in this in this game. I think he, I think only matchup he may have trouble with was Cammy. But even yeah, outside of no, that, yeah. he's, he's he's good. You know, he's good on everybody, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. So um, I definitely do think with those those top characters are kind of like my pick for being that's it. Like those those if you pick any one of those characters right there, you can potentially walk out with a with a W. You know, at the major just because of what they take advantage of uh, within the game. So again, not everybody's going to agree with with someone's list. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one was just mine. I just had an example. That's how I feel is the strongest. Now to talk about to address the bottom tier. Um, not to say that the characters are, are are terrible, but when you make a tier list, you have to put someone at the bottom. So with those, with that being said, those three characters who I feel in the game are kind of like at their weakest state as mm-hmm, of right mm-hmm. now. And we do see, we have we have certain players picking up those characters, like they're really strong. 
But I think the overall meta, if you compare them to the top tier, they're playing two completely different games. <laughs> mm-hmm. Two completely different games. Like those top the top characters, they're using all of the resources. They they're hit confirming just off of this particular situation and getting ridiculous damage and corner carry. And you know, they're putting you in like blenders and mm-hmm. all of this other stuff. So you know those the characters at the bottom they definitely have to work a little bit harder yeah to get their damage their damage going so um with that being said those bottom three uh, jamie lily and geef are definitely those characters where i especially lily i feel like lily is like a change or two away from becoming ridiculous um you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. if they decide to change the right things with her i think she'll be like really really strong she's 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 in the position where She's either so if she's on someone's list, either she's gonna be mid or she's gonna be low tier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. just based off of you know where her kid is, she can't. I feel like she doesn't use meter the same way other characters do, and her and her damage is a little bit more expensive to get off in the long run. Right, but that's just you know that's just my opinion. That's all. No, I say I don't. I don't argue. Like this is funny for me because like said currently in our scene. The low two characters are actually like the current champions. <laughs> really, see, like, y'all, I, y'all, y'all, got, down. y'all see something different out We're there. We're upside That's down. We're literally upside down. Like, okay, well, we have a DJ. We have a DJ for sure. That's like very solid. We actually have three DJs. We have th- four Lilies. We have one or two Zangiefs or two Zangiefs now. We have a Jamie. We have. Um, Two Sims, we have Hondas, we have a Manon, we have a Kimberly. We, like, the re- representation, like, okay, we have a jury. Of course, we got, uh, don't, hey, Chris, I got you, Chris. We, we have, no, we got juries. We got a few juries. So, yes. Top tier wise, like, we, oh, oh, Luke, we do have a Luke army. We have, like, five Lukes. Oh, uh, my goodness. We have three, three Camis. We have two JPs. We have, we don't have no guile. We don't, we don't have a guile. We mm. have a Ken. Finally, we have a Ken. Of course, we have we have Marissa's. There is no Chun Li. We have no Chun Li at all. The entire scene, out of the fifty whatever how much now people we have, literally there, no Chun Li. Interesting. Yep. But yeah, very very interesting. You guys guys definitely have a good variety of uh, characters going down there and that's that's actually pretty good i think that's a good thing because those characters can get that spotlight and Mm -hmm. uh, you guys you guys get to you know you you won't get caught off guard if somebody you know if they go out of state to an event and be like hey uh you know shato plays lily i got this lily experience i uh, let me see what i could do against this other lily player and then you might end up winning a matchup because you have the experience of fighting the character at your local so Right. That's 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 a good thing. I'm glad that people are playing those, un, not not unorthodox, but characters that sh- that just might not be to that level that you normally start to see at these high level tournaments. Right, and yeah. it, it was interesting to see like Data Bane to retain the, Z- the champion of being a reboot from Street Fighter Five was Zanki towards the end where he was terrible to now <laughs> how he started. Um, you know us. Uh, so yeah, now I got I uh, um talking about me script tactics about JPs because we got duck ducky please, and we got dice, and we have Joshua. Oh, we actually have the JP um Mara match, which is very interesting to watch in an exhibition. But um, but yeah, if you're talking about my J- our JPs um in Middle Georgia, but yeah, like the thing is though is like we're kind of upside down, but. I think it's because we might arrange it by the learning curve situation. Oh yeah, no, um, yeah, I don't know, yeah, Ducky, please, um, who else played, yeah, so Joshua, um, there's like two more people that play J- J- um, JPs, but yeah, oh no, yeah, no, we got the, we got the JPs, the JPs, yeah, we got Army, uh, JP Army, for sure, so, but yeah, I think like the learning curve mm-hmm. situation is, I like, that's where it is. Where it is, we might rearrange the tier list, but that by that, like we do agree. So me, I agree about pretty much everything's accurate. Like I'm glad where DJ is not too strong. Like I'm glad he has enough weaknesses that 
he can't be like seem ridiculous. Like he's consistent, and but placement wise, I say overall, and like especially at a higher thing like uh, majors and regionals, you know, top mm. twenty four maybe. You know, he's there, and then that's it. You'll start, you know, but now you like now the case is like Blanca and. Like the big case is like it was Blanca because of Men R D and maybe one other player they using him like towards the end or whatnot. Or national usually just consistently that tournaments. But Blanca, you know, is I personally don't know too much about him, how to deal against him, but I'm not gonna argue that where he is now, that's makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I think he has a lot of um it's uh, like uh, issues. Like the thing that really gets him going and that really gets him grinding, like when he gets the offense and he really gets the, you know, the mix up with the dolls and all that type of stuff. I think he does need time to set up. Like if you don't give him time to do anything, like, yeah, I think you shut him down. That, that really is the thing. Rush. He now is in um, mm-hmm. North yeah. Carolina. Um, he actually moved here for an uh, internship. He had Rush. The modern JP, yes. But he now he actually is from North Carolina, so he moved back there. So that was temporary. Yes, we temporarily had him. So y'all guys are not wrong. But yeah, um yeah, as far as like Blanca goes, you know, that makes sense. A uh, Honda, yeah. Like the Manon I thought Manon would be a tier, but I, I think once a lot of people played against her, the weakness showed a, early on, to be honest. A lot of weaknesses mm-hmm. showed only on early on. Like same with Kimberly. Um I was hoping that Ryu would be high, but you know, a lot of weakness like you start showing. Cause like it's it's yeah, you can see like in the comparison, like, you know, the amount of weaknesses versus the strengths. Um it it, it clearly and it clearly makes sense. So it's it's consistent and it tells like about the balance and design of the game. Because the thing mm. is, though, there's no characters on the, are unplayable. None of the characters are unplayable. That's the good part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that it's again when you make a a tier list, there would have to be characters that you'd have to put at the bottom of that tier list. And right, right. Even right. though the game has good balance, um, at the end of the day, someone has to go down there. But those characters are like still really good and valuable. And can do something, right? right? You can't sleep on anybody. You know, you might run into the character in ranked or whatever, and be like, oh, okay, well, this is a low tier character. I'm about to win this matchup, and they end up blowing you up. And be like, bro, how did I lose to that character? I'm playing right. top tier. How is that possible? Well, anything is possible, especially in this game where they did adjust the balance pretty well between the characters. Right. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, again, mm-hmm. Aki's about to get thrown into the mix, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, she could she could shift everything around too, you know, as well. So we'll see uh yeah. definitely what happened here. Um we're gonna move on to our next topic. Uh here is uh this past not this past weekend, probably about maybe two weeks ago or was it last week? It have been last week. But anywho, uh Gamers Eight, they did the one million dollar oh, yeah. uh Street Fighter Six tournament in Saudi Arabia. You know, the production on that went crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They had the whole GameCube looking player intros with the cube, you know, the spinning cues with the similar to what you see like on ESPN when they do the like the player stat analysis. They had the ads where everything was all unique and it was in the native language. And it looked like there were like a really a lot of investors in the audience. Um, you know, Kakaru, he walked away with that 400,000 with JP, you know, so it was, uh, it, it was that event and that production was kind of, kind of clean, man. It was looking, I ain't gonna say looking better than evil, but, uh, it was, uh, looking better than evil <laughs> because I mean, they had, they, I, look, the sponsor game was on point. They had what, Wells Fargo. They had the uh, they had some Saudi car That's company. A big, big league. Oh my gosh, man! There was some bread put into this, and the whole. I'm pretty sure a lot of people. Well, I've never heard of Gamers Eight. That's the that's the. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most interesting part 
I mean, but apparently they have multiple streams, and I guess they stream other games and stuff. Yeah, I've never heard of them. They do prior um, to this event. They do Counter Strike right now, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. okay, so yeah, they got they got pockets. Yeah, they <laughs> they got pockets, yo. You know, this especially you know you got the esports going now, but yeah, I mean that event was was pretty amazing. It had some really great matches. I think, uh, which no 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 that was evil. I'm sorry, I was thinking about the the Kakuru and uh, Takedo match where it was. JP and Ken and uh, Kakru nearly won it, but it just came down to that one last mistake mm-hmm. that he had lost, and that was that would have got him further into the bracket. But um, but he made it up. He said, "Yo, you know what? I'm about to go to Saudi Arabia real quick. I'm about to enter this Gamers Eight tournament yes. out there, and I'm about to take home this bread, please." Man's like Kakru with the JP man. JP again is the character that's just. Can be overwhelming to play against. I can I can assure you for that. You definitely need the patience of a saint to uh, fight against that character. Mm-hmm. I know people want to go in and rush down and stuff like that, but you just gotta take your time. And uh, you know, again, this I don't I feel like there's no concrete plan on how to fight it, but uh, JP is out there, man. He's definitely a really good character, and he can punish people who are just not patient enough you know mm-hmm. you just have to wait it out but yeah what do, what do you think what do you, what was your thoughts about the uh, the game is eight of it that thing was clean that production was clean like yeah it, let's say it was it felt mysterious like it just came out of nowhere and like whoa all this play going out here and find out and going in and a million dollar pot ooh, four hundred thousand dollars for first place dang dang I mean, it, it put, in the sense, it felt, it felt like evil to shame a little bit in comparison. I mean, like, granted, yeah, Invitational, they, like, in general, like, they could do a lot more Invitational. There's a lot less players and so forth. So, not a lot of money as far as, you know, processing for a lot of things. Because, like you say, you don't have to worry about vendors all that type of stuff. A lot of the money mm-hmm. can go to just production and the payout. You know, because majors and so forth, there's hotels, the payout, there's uh, vendors, all that type of stuff. So, yeah, companies that can just, you know, same, like, same case with, like, Red Bull, Kumite, stuff like that. And um, uh, at one point, we had um, one up or we play whatever. You know, like I said, those type of HyperX like that, those type of stuff, you know, they don't have to go to all those extra features. Um, so, yeah, to see that, though, um you know, it was interesting. Like in, invitationals, um, in general, definitely a nice showcase of things. Um, but yeah, I said Gamer Eight has a lot of money because to do that for not only Street Fighter and then Tekken and every other game they're doing right now, shoot. Um, as I said it was an awesome experience. So it was kind of cool. It was really cool to see. Um, of course, to see it in Saudi Arabia, you know, which is actually a very strong country. Um, for his gamers and competitors too, because like I said, you know, Angry Bird, Big Bird, you know, from that, you know, that area, that region, and mm-hmm. so forth. So it's really cool to showcase the talent of those type of players there, and you see the representation, you know, in their own home turf. Oh, for sure, and it also made you think that it's it could be possible that you know maybe Evo could be in Saudi Arabia. That oh wait, that's, that's right, because there is a third Evo announced. They didn't say nothing about it. Yeah, that that could oh, be a thing. Yeah. You know, we'll talk. We'll talk to be like, hey man, look, mm. Saudi Arabia, y'all, or y'all e- looking clean out here. Let me let me get in on that. So Evo EU or Middle East? Oh no, huh? That's a, that's a, that's a good question. Where, where's the next Evo? I'm I mean, I'm guessing that. I mean, there's North there's America, there's Japan. And like mm-hmm. you think there's something where in the middle, li- maybe literally middle east, maybe. <laughs> but you know, maybe I'm, bad I'm, pun joke. But yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, I would like to also say UK. You know, evil going to the, yeah, going to the UK. You know, yeah, yeah it's so, That's a thing. It's so in the middle. That's I, I think it's an EU. I think it's it's an EU? EU. Evil EU. Yeah. I mean, it it kind of rolls off the tongue. Yeah. 
Yeah, that it works. You know, evil Japan, evil you know in the U.S. and now evil EU. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, That's, they got they got a, they got a few players out there. That was very oh yeah, because right now it's on VS VFX SF VFXX is happening, which is all like a mm-hmm. big um, uh, it's a UK major is happening, you know, for all mm-hmm. games too, you know. But yeah, I mean, it's not well. No, that's a big. That was a big surprise for me to see Evo out there, to be announced. Well, maybe out there, but even a third Evo to be announced because that's something you would never expect at all that time. I mean, I remember Evo Japan. You know, that's like okay. You know what? That makes sense. You know, they're kind of have an Evo out there, but a third Evo. That's gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, and also, but they got the uh, the Evo Day announcement too. And yeah, Evo, and the Keith is City. Exactly, the Cannon Brothers. They got that big honor to get in that. I nearly that cried. The city. Actually, I I nearly cried about it, and that was crazy. The because... fighting games came a long way, man. Bro, they came a long way. That's a wow, a major achievement. Like that's... Evil Day. Wow, bro. Like that. Yeah, like I said, that was those announcements was what that was like. That was huge. Like the governor of Nevada, just like, hey, here you go. I was like, what? I mean, it's, right. it's, 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 it shows, you know, if anything, mm. it shows to the whole world, you know, that gaming in the sense that really could have a type of impact. And, and in a sense, a positive impact, of course, you know, behind the things, you know, re- research development and tours wide, it brought a lot of money for the city and brought a lot of mm. attraction. So, you know, and it, it, it was been consistent and it grew. So that obs, you know, that it makes, you know, it kind of makes sense the more you think about it. But to expect that to happen, I mean, major shout outs to the brothers. I'm very proud of it all. Yep. Shout out to FGC. That's like a milestone, like a, a step for more for mankind. Wait, a step for man. I'm up. Ah, I messed it up. A small step for man, a big step for mankind. Yeah. Yeah, one stop for man something mankind. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically that that's 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 a part of history now. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, you know, they officially announced that it, there will be an evil day in Las Vegas from here on out. So that's added. I want to see that come up in my calendar. It's my holiday <laughs> now. Or come up or come up on a calendar. You know, is it paid? Is it, is it PTO? Everybody be <laughs> off of work to honor to honor Evo, and they just show Evo slides all throughout Las Vegas that day. That would be legit, Bruh. Yep, for Evo John Cook. Choi back in the day to yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's a big honor to be awarded the key to the city for such such commitment. Mm-hmm. All the years and years they've been doing it. Uh, so again, big shouts to the Cannon and Evil staff for you know achieving that 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 dream, man. But let's let's mm-hmm. uh, before we segue on to the announcements, was there? Anything else you want to discuss before we close it out? Um, I well, the thing about it is like you know, um, of course, the other thing is, of course, there have been issues that I saw the Evo, and that's with the console. You know, you know, there's a big thing that's been going on too, especially since Street Fighter Six came out. It's like more of a console platform wars because there has been so many push for. Different consoles between the PS5 versus the Xbox versus PC. Phew. There's a lot. I heard, I saw the US, the melted USB things uh, from the converters, the Brook converters. I saw that. Well, um, I mean, who knows how long they've them, them PS5s have been on? I don't, I, me personally, I do not leave my PS5 on just right, because right, right. <laughs> I do not leave it on. So I don't know how long those PS5s have been on. They could have been on for days prior to Evo. You know, mm-hmm. that's you know that's just been sitting there and it could have just overheated. Um, right. the, I thought they turned uh, it off for the hour because there was like an hour gap between the pools, if I'm not mistaken, in the schedule. Yeah, it was definitely some kind of overheating type of thing just because of the way the fan was designed next to, like, the power supply. So, uh, uh, yeah, it is definitely, yeah, this, I mean, Jeshua kind of broke it down um, as mm-hmm. far as the design of the console. But, you know, we also looked at it since it being like a Sony 
sponsored event. Mm. You know, PS5 had to have been the move. Right, I mean, right. Thank goodness, it, thank goodness it was PS5 and not PS4. That's all I'm saying. I'm like, because there's a PS4 version. Yeah, I don't know about that. Listen, I, look, hey, man, look, I know my jet engine will go crazy when I boot up Street Fighter 6 on my PS4. As a TO, yes. But look, I'm broke. Okay? So that's what I don't, for those who don't still worry about there, for just that record, I don't get paid for doing running these tournaments. Not yet. But I don't get paid, you know, where to own enough to get a car and PS5s. And, you know, I'm so poor with the PS4, my jet engine. But at least it doesn't overheat. And I try to jab at Sony. But hey, my PS4 is still living. Seven years around is all right. But anyway, um, still going. It's, it's still it's still ch- uh, chugging along, you know. I mean, it does sound like, you know, mine, mine says the airport sound effect too. So <laughs> we both in the same. Yo, high five, yo, high five. There hey, it is. high five. Hey, let's go. But hey, man, I still got my PS4. Hey, look, if it's 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 still sounding like it's like a hair dryer. <laughs> It's, I'm like, bro, I wonder if it's going to take off or explode or something. Ish. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> I didn't be careful, man. I just right. look at it one day, and uh, it's it's still going. But, hey, right. man, look, you, you got to use right. what you got to use. But uh, about playing on it in tournament, it's kind of like a different story. Right. Oh, no, no, say. no. Yeah. It, feels, now, it definitely feels to, different. To be fair, now, we do run PCs and PS5s on well, most games now. But shout outs to Coach. We got supplied USB hubs. Oh, hold on. We got them. We got, so we beat day, no, month by month, or event by event, we are beating the allegations. We beat the allegations of not having the converters for our tournaments. We beat the allegations of not having the right platforms for the tournament. Now we beat the allegations that our PS5 are not going to melt during the tournaments. <laughs> Look, you gotta protect that. You gotta protect that investment. Yeah, they trying to catch. To's gotta get them. They gotta. Nah. Hey, we look. no. So, so this is an example of event of like this is important as a to to pay attention to other events that's going on, like Evo and like Gamers A, what like whatnot, and how the production and things perform. Because especially when you want to see, you want to make sure that to the best of your advantage, have the most optimal resources to provide it. You know, in course, I said things want to happen. Learn from the mistakes. You no, know, mm-hmm. you see the event where the PS5 might melt and so forth. Hey, they got these hubs that prevent that from happening. If hey, the P- people don't have um the right controllers and stuff, and not everyone going to have a PS5 to play on and so forth, and they don't like the PS5 c- controllers. Hey, there's a there's a converter. Make sure you have the converters. You know, if you know the monitor is going to have this. Bad features of you know screen tearing, all that type of stuff. Make sure you have the right screen, whatever. You know, and I think that's the big thing that's happening too. Like I said, all the locals are fighting between the Xbox, the PS5, PCs, you know, to avoid you know any issues as much as possible. It's a huge scramble. It's all over the mm-hmm. locals. So that like that's a topic I did want to touch on a bit. Um, because there's been a constant uphill battle about having the most optimal resource to have the gameplay go as smooth as possible. And it's, it's very costly, though, at the time, because like, we would like to have all PCs, but maybe update issues, controller issues here and there, whatever, and you mm-hmm. have to worry about then there's like having PS5 consoles, then it's like, yeah, the melting, the you know overheating, the design of it, whatever, and stuff like that. Well, here's the Xbox, and there's is the input lag is worse than the PS5 and PC. We want less input lag issue. Da, da, da. Like, it's so much. It's a lot. That's like the topic I just want to touch on just a bit. But, you know, yeah, that's something that for our TOs to be aware of is going to be a lot of demands for the most optimal platform or resources. So be aware, y'all guys. Watch the tournaments and see what issues comes up as a result. Take notes on the feedbacks and just go from there and learn as much as possible. And then, of course, provide what you can when things don't go well. Learn from the mistakes and find ways to help improve. Mm. 
Well, that that's definitely, um, especially in regards to the the PC, where mm-hmm. as if you constantly input, well, constantly input and you know changing controllers, the computer has to find drivers for the USB device that you're plugging in. Mm-hmm. And I think there's an issue with, especially at tournaments, if you're playing on PC, where you have to constantly input, you know, plugging in and plugging out the USB cable right. into the port, it could cause an issue with the firmware on uh, the your USB device that you're using. So, I don't know. That's just something something else to look out for, too, as well mm-hmm. um, there. But outside of that, I think the other thing you wanted to discuss was the uh the street fighter lore you, you yes. wanted to talk about the lore real quick sure give me one second i'll do a transition but yeah um so this was very interesting because like i said the lore of the game play series does actually affect some of the the gameplay itself and a lot of people um may not notice that like i said example you know the reason why ryu at one end like street fighter 4 or whatever or there's a there was an evil ryu or of a case and then there's like he had this destructive feature of um you know you know and so forth and now like he everything's all electric and so forth and he has this new move and here and there what whatever the lord plays a main important role uh, and so forth but in particular though um was um actually can't see the full full video full full um i, I can i can like scroll down to it mm-hmm. but um because the question is that's happening now um the new street fighter vote is here is who's your favorite boss um throughout the entire series and it's like the main game alpha does count but i think it'll still consider like bison in a sense because that's even though it's um yeah street fighter is street fighter one street fighter alpha street fighter two street fighter four street fighter five street fighter Six. Oh, sorry. They, you, oh, wait, wait, wait. Street Fighter you Three. Missed the, missed the game. Sorry, Street Fighter Five. The Street Fighter Three because they like they they're like in between. Like Street Fighter Five takes place before and after Three. It's kind of weird. But then the Street Fighter Six is the latest. So, question is though, is have it here and who is the famous boss? So of course they get a special title. Boom. You have these five bosses. Now, before we go more into it, think about Street Fighter Five and who could be potentially missing. For those out there in the chat, I'll give you guys a second. Shadow Ishii pretty much might know. I'll give you a second. But who is kind of missing, and who people in this? Who did you expect to be Street Fighter Five? Like Sagat, Street Fighter One. Okay. Bison, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha ish. The Gill, Street Fighter 3. Seth is Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 5. Huh. Who was supposed to be there? Who he thought was supposed to be there originally? Um, Shadow Ace. Hmm. I'm, I'm wondering why G is there. Mm. I thought there was another character before that. You know, who, that's who, been in the game longer. Who you think. Th- who did you think? Say okay, so scrub tactics say Fong. Okay, all right. Mm. All right, uh, Chris. You I wanna... mean, Fong. Fong was like what the the, the henchman, the bison henchman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. right. He wasn't really a boss character. Well, no, no, he was a he was one of the new Shadowloo bosses. Right. He I think he replaced like what Sagat more or less. Because... Yeah, he was the Sagat mm-hmm. Sagat replacement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so that Chris, does technically count as a boss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I like so. I said, that's a good guess too. That's a good guess. Um. Now, if if anyone um like Chris or anyone want to else want to answer, have a guess. Because the thing is, everyone else knows who 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 they thought was supposed to be, and then they were like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, they did the marketing for the character. They did a lot of marketing for him, and he still got washed in the story, which didn't make any sense. But yep. yes, it, <laughs> it didn't make, you know, it was marketed after his five, the the V that's on his chest and stuff. <laughs> but we talk about none other than Nakali, man. Yep, Chris got Nikali, it. Nakali, 
The so, Kali just that was. A, I, don't, I don't know, man. The, I, I, they, that, dropped, they dropped the bag with this character. They did. They actually did. Like the the way the Kali was portrayed, like oh, he's gonna be the new big bad and everything, and then. You know, because like he's the final boss of what of the, in the arcade, whatever. Well, not arcade. He like the final boss like of the survival mode stuff. Um, and then of course like the way the the storyline is like you know he's this ancient warrior that takes the souls of all the ones he defeated. I'm like, okay, that's like a goddess like concept. He's an ancient being entity. Oh man, this would be great. But then the general story DLC came out. And then is oh it's bison again, right? Well, they, yeah, they threw it away. They threw it away. They, they did. I, I think they did intentionally wanted to have something more about it for the story. Yeah. I think because of the other features, whatever about it, they it didn't it was executed. Now, however, this is the thing though, because to see this person who I love dearly. Because the way he was when he appeared is he just like giving speeches. He is very charismatic. He's a president of the world. He's blah blah blah. I love this guy. He is so much fun. He's so great. G is amazing. G's a problem in Street Fighter Three Arcade Edition. He's broken. Whatever. He's V Trigger Robbery. He's ridiculous. Blah blah blah. But then. At one point, there's a costume that he wears specifically in the story that's very, very suspicious. Because it reminds of a certain character in another game that we in the series. Why does he have that Q costume? I mean, I'm just gonna just for the sake of time. He had that costume. And if everybody was like Going berserk. I remember when I first saw that. I went crazy because like Q was the most mysterious character. No one had no idea where he came from, and even in the story. Why does he have that costume? That is a very. Now is it is it to a, like where they just wanted to play homage to G because of his uh, move set? Because uh, G because G's move set kind of like was similar to the Q as regards to like the rush punch, the command grab, and some of the normals that he had. And then now that his taunt, he had the taunt like him. Like when he does, yeah, the, and his uh, his V skill, right? Like he does the same taunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So who is he? And then he gets the defense. He gets the same <laughs> who defense is this guy. He gets the same defense um buff when he does the the, the V skill taunts. And like Q, could Q and Third Strike every time he taunts as a defense buff, and he gets the highest defense in the game. Hmm. And I was like, Nah, that can't be real. But then the Ring of Galaxy stage, everyone is wearing the same mask. If you look closely at the cameraman and a few people around the production of the Galaxy stage, where they're in space, there are other people that are wearing the same mask that he was wearing with the, with the wearing the key the Q light costume. See now, I didn't. I, okay, so I, I probably okay. need to look at that stage again. Uh, I'm gonna have I'm, to look at that I'm stage. Put, I'm gonna pull up right now. Cause I'll have this baby ready. Cause like, <laughs> cause I was like, that was interesting, and I was like, what? Hold on. Cause yeah, they, when they did the, um, let me see if I can find it where the people were there, and I was like, that is very interesting. Let's see if I can find it. That is that. I've never noticed the people in the background on that stage because that the stage itself was like too bright, like the colors are flashing and stuff. And I was like, nah, I don't really like this stage. But apparently they're in like what a spaceship. Uh, there we go. <laughs> they're in a spaceship above Earth or something, or kind of some type of a satellite. Right. And yeah. So the, I mean, yeah. it's got because like yeah, if it is it like a galaxy, like a globe. The thing is, that's the thing. His his tattoo or whatever is the bot on his body is a globe that moves. Uh, so like a dome. Yeah, yeah, he has the he has the Earth. Yeah, he has the the whole Earth spinning around him on his uh, body. And they, that's what I was how that was I was hoping like the second batch of DLC right. story would explain. We got robbed on that because I think yeah Street Fighter Five it had a lot of missing content. It had a lot of missing content. Let me throw you. Let me throw this out to you too as well. We were actually supposed to get 
an Armika stage with the wrestling ring. We were supposed to get that. We were supposed to get Fong stage that appears in his promo art at the little garden. We were supposed to get that. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to get Ken's Street Fighter 2 stage, but that never happened. We were supposed to get general story. Well, every every character was supposed to get a story, a part two to their story, mm-hmm. the story mode, but mm-hmm. that never happened. That, yeah, that never happened. And also, the game was supposed to stop production after season four. So we weren't supposed to get Rose, Oro, and all, you know, those characters. Those characters, they had to make them from scratch because of COVID. You know, I think uh, it was a production thing that was going on. So those characters were actually playing. There wasn't a fifth season that was supposed to be playing for the game. It was mm. supposed to end after Seth. So it was supposed to have all the bosses, but season five, those season five characters, Rose, Oro, mm-hmm. Akira, you know, those those characters were just they weren't supposed to be there. And it would and the development of the game would have like Street Fighter Six was supposed to come out earlier than mm-hmm. than it did this year. Yep. Yeah. But now as far as for G, they actually confirmed that G was the final boss of Street Fighter Five. It development was. And they said he is. Um, but I think, like I said, the, a lot of the stuff that wanted to happen, uh, unfortunately, were not able to execute in time. Yep. So, yeah. So, like I said, the thing about it, because like in the story mode, for a certain character like Rose and Oro, no, Rose and Gil, because Gil was like, you're familiar, but you're different. And Rose was like, and the, the biggest one was Rose. Because the thing is, like, he like, he's a fool. She was like, he's a fool. Like, he's not that serious. I'm not sure what's going on with him. And kept, and when she fights him in her story, she's like, you're something else. You're in the end of the world. And he like, well, yes, I am the world. Like, he kept, he kept being so, like, very uh, cryptic. Constantly cryptic. Yeah, because yeah, it's like he wasn't human or something. Like, he's not right. a human. So some kind of I don't know alien or something. Right. So the thing was that uh, for the main point, like a lot of people looked at this picture, and they were like, "Where's the collie?" And then they were kind of realized, like, you know, and then like, yeah, the collie wasn't that much of a hype as whatever. Then they're like, "Wait, no, Bison's supposed to be the villain of um Street Fighter Five because you beat he's the big boss. He did everything is whatever. Yeah. So they focus a lot on Bison." And the thing is, that was the end of Bison for Street Fighter Five, and that's supposed to be his death. Yeah, right. Because Street Fighter Three and stuff takes place afterwards, and you, and you talk because yeah, it was supposed to link about how this what happened between Street Fighter Two to Street Fighter Three overall, and Four mm-hmm. and Five was supposed to fill in the gap because like Bison somehow was gone, and he had Gil just come out of nowhere like the Secret Society, whatever. So. They were trying to answer the questions about that lore wise. So that's the thing. But then this is kind of through a wrench of stuff and about G. And of course, down to be fair, in the arcade mode of Street Fighter V, there are certain conditions you do and you end up fighting G randomly in this um, Q costume. Like you do Q in Street Fighter Three. Yeah. You could you could definitely tell they wanted to do more with the character. Right. But like you like you said, resources and time, they just couldn't execute it properly. And we were supposed to get more uh DLC content. It just never happened. Um, uh, but yeah, that that game it did have a lot of missing things in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um right. that should have that should have been it. So that's why G is kinda like flew over everyone's head and I just I, I was seeing some posts on Twitter saying they didn't know G was a boss character. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that Which, that would have solved the mystery if they expanded on it a little bit more. Right. But it, we knew we, I mean, knew if people paid attention to the, you know, the character endings in the story, like Rose's, like mm-hmm. you say Rose's story and stuff, and how he's supposed to be the end. Then you, yeah, they'd see that yeah, G was destined to be like the final, the the final boss of uh, Street Fighter Five. Yeah, yeah. Stay woke, y'all. Stay woke. So. <laughs> Stay, stay woke. I mean, but you know, we, we we also see that picture, right? We also see the picture with the mm-hmm. the the bosses uh, from Street right. Fighter One and Street Fighter Five. But there's a game missing. What, what what game you think is missing in that 
Why is there only five of them? It looks like something's missing. But I, I don't, I don't know. What, you, what you think, Retro? I mean, you no, know, we got Street Fighter Alpha, which is part of the series. I mean, it's Street, they call it Street Fighter Zero. But then again, like I said, Bison's there. But then, like, well, currently, um, we do have Street Fighter Five. Oh no, no, Street Fighter. 5. Oh, Street Fighter Six, which begs the question though. And I think that's the question you're trying to figure out. Who is the boss of Street Fighter Six? A hey, my guy. Let's talk about it. <laughs> my guy Retro. Where is the boss of Street Fighter Six? <sighs> and interesting. Now, mm-hmm. if it was built to be JP, right? Mm-hmm. It was built to be JP. Like you see him. He holds this, he, you do the World Tour mode, he holds this whole tournament and stuff like that, and, yeah. um, you know, he's a, you know, he's a bad guy, he tries to blow up, but Bosch's sister or something with the bomb, um, yeah. store, you know, World Tour spoilers, but, hey, look, it's been too long, y'all should The comic finished. books. Look, you know what I'm saying, the comic books, you know, he appears there, but he's appearing as Bison's accountant, like, he was, uh, he worked in Bison's financial department, so he was like, "Hey, look, man, I, I kind of want this. I kind of want this power for myself, <laughs> real quick." He's so yeah. money large. I wonder how how he get it. Right. Well, no, he actually admitted in this, and he played the story mode in the actual game on the arcade mode. He does say like, "This is a front from money laundering." So he like he was just like he just do it out there. Like, hey, all this is a front from money money laundering. That's all. <laughs> but the thing yeah. though. With Ken, cause you saw how Ken was when he, they first saw him. He man down on dumps. He like he lost his job. He lost his wife and kid. Like everything that. And then if you read the comic books, which is a prequel to the story, he got set up. Mm. JP was like, "Hey man, we appreciate having your money, having you become a CEO of your father's business and invest into this tournament. It's all for good charity, blah de, blah de, blah. And then Nashaw is actually a new country in Asia. It's a brand new country. Hmm. Established. Yep. Just come out of, a country came out of nowhere. He founded it. JP did. Man. And and they did the, the, the tournament. And J- Ken was like, alright, cool. And as you know, there was an, att- an attack. A terrorist attack. And Ken got framed. And they said, mm-hmm. well, because his money was involved, Ken Masters is the pul- the pulprit. The culprit. And, J- and JP was like, no, Ken like found out JP got set him up. And he like, hey man, you set me up. You got me trying to get my kid involved. JP was like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like, it, it yeah, so it was like a four comic book issue comic book series that led to it since May, and yeah, so mm. and like I said, now you play the story mode, you know, the thing about it eventually because then you meet all the characters in the game and you can use their abilities as the avatar, and of course you know, and so forth. Eventually, you do meet JP. Now, this one thing I would say that it's a spoiler. You have to beat the game in order to meet make JP your master. That's mm-hmm. one thing you have to say. Now, here's the other thing. The DLC characters, they, they did say this in development while the game was about to come out. The DLC mm-hmm. characters are also, were also going to appear in the War Tour mode. Mm-hmm. So I don't think the story is ended right when you beat it, per se. Mm-hmm. I think the story is going to develop more as the DLC characters are coming out. That's what I'm thinking too. I'm thinking there's going to be an expansion. Mm-hmm. Um, now that this game is going to get a little bit more, this game has a little bit more money and more development time on it. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure, you will, will, like every character DLC character. What it's looking like so far is like every DLC character that's coming out is going to be in world tour mode, mm-hmm. and you make them your master. So that makes me think they 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 may have a like for ongoing like season two, season three, and stuff like that. Um, how are you going to fit all of those characters mm-hmm. in the world tour mode? They may even they may even add new countries. 
Mm. Oh, you yeah. know. Mm. Now think about it. Before think you, about that, like before Russia. Oh yeah, Russia. You know, yeah, well, mm. no, not Russia so far. Well, they, got Russia. they got Russia. Yeah, yeah, they got Russia. Yeah, and then I mean, JP, they... JP is Russian too. That's the other thing. Yeah, yeah, they may they may add in new countries to it too mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So you may you know Africa, Alina, you know. So there's the mm-hmm. there's also there's there's definitely a possibility for new countries to get into the mix. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm very interested to see how they're going to do it with you know once all the characters come out like are they going to expand mm-hmm. like drop an expansion to the story mode? Hey, we have this right, part two. Right. If you guys want to see it then. You know that's yeah. that'll be it for world tour, but yeah, in regards to that, that should uh, conclude it as far as the what we we're talking about. That um, so mm-hmm. we're gonna get to the announcements. Yep, that and we have. Scrub tactics to answer your question about Kuma, he is a boss, but he wasn't a like a story boss as far as like you know, they they pretend like he's just a god that they and more or less he's a person that want to go around becoming the strongest and. It does it by killing to fight to the death. So I think the concept of him being a actual you're not wrong. You're technically not wrong, but the concept I think was like I'm the main bad guy that that stands in your way. Now he did beat the stuff out of um, Bison for sure in one of the games, but I think ultimately it's the concept that he's not going to be like I'm the ultimate thing you have to fight. I'm just there so I can see how strong you are. I can, so I can fight to the death and that's it. You know, Bison's like, I want to take over the world domination, like Seth and DG and all of them type of thing. You know, that's a, the concept they consider boss property. So yeah, Akuma should be a boss, but unfortunately, as the picture shows, yeah. But right, uh, we as far as, you know, going to the announcements and all, um, yeah, we'll talk, because I said we might talk about them later down the line, but yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Give me just a second. Do, 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 do. Make sure everything's good to go. All right, first event. To go. Um, we'll go more detail about it. The Clash. All right, yep. There's the uh, the Carry Out Clash hosted by OG Yon. Uh, is now on Fridays, I believe, starting at 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern Standard Time there. Uh, it's also part of the World Warrior uh, CBT for the East uh, East Coast section, and this uh, particular event, if you want to get more information on it, you can go to his Twitter at drion, and it'll have the link to the Discord. It'll have the sign up link for the tournaments, and he's pretty much the hit the head to for that series. Uh, we had some of our players here from Georgia recently compete in those. I think uh, the highest placing was uh, Terrence. He ended up getting ninth. Uh, there he he was almost in there for top eight, but you know that that puts him in a good spot seating wise for the next event uh, for sure. And there's actually a schedule uh, for all of the upcoming events as part of that particular tour. So once again, big shout out to OG Yan and his staff for making this uh event happen uh here and i believe if retro if you have that that schedule there for the whole uh, uh oh, yeah with chun lee the chun lee on it yep let me go ahead and move that up on the slide right quick let's see here at the end yeah boop 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 all right there we go All right. All right. Yep. Yeah. And there you guys go. There's the uh, the official schedule for all of the events. They're up into including the finals, uh, the top eight finals uh, for this world tour. You know, World Warrior event. I believe winner of the event gets that that slot at Evo. Um, not not Evo. I'm sorry. Capcom Cup. Mm-hmm. They get that slot at Capcom Cup because I think the format is. Pretty much different. I think a majority of the events for the Capcom Cup this year are geared toward online events. Um, they have a few offline, with Evil being one of them. So Angry Bird, because he won Evil, he automatically got gets his spot at Capcom Cup uh, for next year. So hopefully, you know, he'll be in good shape as far as training and preparing for that event. 
when the time comes. But yeah, the winner of these regional events um, all around, they get their slots into uh, Capcom Cup. So this is just the schedule for the East. We're on the East. We're in Georgia, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Macon, Georgia. We're 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 in the Georgia area. So this is just our region, our region schedule. Um, if you go onto the main site uh, for Cup Cup Cup, it'll have the list for all the different other regions. And if you want to c- compete in those events, uh, it has the sign up links on that that site as well. Yep. Cool. 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 Definitely, like I said, shout out, man. Sign up for sure. Like I said, like I said, you also get a chance to get qualified, and you know, at the end, who knows who will take that one million dollars? You may be part of that. Uh, of course, um, you might more know more about detail about this, but of course, for for esports, they have their um one thousand dollar tournament for Street Fighter Six next Saturday. On August 26th, they call it the Drive Impact. Um, starts at 1 p.m. So you want to go more details about it or add it to a Shadow Race? Um, I mean, basically all the information you see there, plus what Retro said, 1K in the pot. Um, you never know who's going to show up and who's going to pull up there. But I know all the 404 regulars are going to be in the building for sure, trying to get their hand into that pot and get a piece of that. That 1K pie, you know, they said money is the biggest motivator. And if you need motivation, that right there will definitely do it. So, shout out to 404 Esports for putting this event together. You see the start time there for the pools at 1 p.m. And the Twitch link at 404 Esports if you want to watch that live. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. And, of course, if it's not in Atlanta, but uh, near Fayetteville, there will be the Zone Breakers IHOP Tournament. The Break Fest tournament um, that same Saturday, but actually you might make it to both if you drive there just in time because it starts at 5:30 for Street Fighter 6. And of course, there's other games uh, like Bust a Move. Interesting, seen that in a long time. Old classic game. But then 3 p.m. you have the Tekken, a uh, Pokemon tournament. Sorry, Blaze Blue, Cross Tag, and then Tekken 7, Street Fighter 6, and then Smash Brothers. Yep, um, definitely you not only can win money. But also, you can win some pancakes. So, for sure. And I yeah, for sure, man. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ever competed, if you ever competed at a at a, at a Waffle House or what, think about it. What's the most unique place you've ever played in the tournament? Think about that. And then now picture you uh, competing at a uh, at a IHOP in their uh, <laughs> meeting conference room. <laughs> no, no. I don't think you should have it at a Waffle House. You'd be literally scrapping. <laughs> Oh, not Waffle House. I mean IHOP. Man, no, man. no, yeah, 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 yeah IHOP. Yeah, you be really scrapping, scrapping the lime stop. <laughs> oh, nah, nah, don't. We don't encourage that over there for that. But yeah, that's definitely a unique place to hold the tournament. But hey, man, look, you want pancakes? Pancakes and punishment is going down over there, mm-hmm. um, for sure at the breakfast uh, for uh, Zone Breakers. Yep. But last but not least, um, of course, not too long afterwards, and it's been a while, um, I'm super excited to finally announce this, but for our tournament, on, the, of course, it's a little too small. Uh, I might blow up a little bit and scroll down. We're going to have our third annual Tuesday Children 9-11 tournament, Memorial Tournament. Uh, of course, the main games are Smash Brothers, Street Fighter 6, Tekken 7, Guilty Gear. And of course, more in details. Um, basically, we're doing this another once again. Um, for those who do not know, Tuesday Children is a <clears throat> special um, 9/11 um, charity organization that we teamed up with for the past um, two years, and of course now doing for another third year, where we're going to raise donations and donate do donation drive um, towards the company or no, sorry, me, the organization. Um, this is supporting families uh, who had loved ones that uh, suffered from the 9/11 attack many, many years ago, fortunately, and also those in the military that um, uh, helped out and supported during that incident as well. And we decided to kind of do something special because we had September tournaments around that time frame. So what we decided to do is like, hey, why not team up and do a charity? You know, not only have the FCC do just gaming, but make it gaming a actual meaning purposeful thing and like an outreach thing to help out the community 
um, beyond our horizon, obviously. Obviously. So, yes, we're going to have um, Tuesday Children to be featured as um, the beneficiary for our event. And, of course, you know, Smash starts at 2. The FGC games will start at their 5. The venue fee will go towards them. But, of course, there will be a pot for each game pro- provided. And there will be special raffles. So, definitely, um, it's a win-win situation for all parties involved. And shout-outs to also, um, of course, Reboot to be the host venue for it. Um, Fatty's Pizza is going to be part of it as well for those who like to get some good pizza, 10% off. And, of course, this is part of the Swag on Nerds um, Cherry Blossom Easy Kai Tournament Series. Um, of course, um, y'all guys keep in touch with that, um, keep up with that. But, yes, um, looking forward to having this happen once again for three years of supporting Tuesday Children. And they are very excited to be on board with us again, so it has some more cool swag. We had some cool stuff um, at one point last year with KOF and some um, Tuesday Children's Swag. So we'll see what happens this time. And that will be all announcements, I believe. All right. And there it is. Well, <laughs> hope you guys definitely have enjoyed this uh, this episode three of the podcast. Again, appreciate you guys for tuning in and supporting the cause. Uh, again, we can't do this without your support. And we hope you enjoyed that episode three goodness. Again, if you're interested and you're listening to the rebroadcast, you can always uh, contact Sir Retro. And uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, Sir Retro, where can good people find you at? Um. At this point, you can find me pretty much anywhere. And as anywhere, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, Discord. Um, all, it is such a short retro zero eight. But um, uh, for my Discord, because the name change is now <laughs> Mayor of Macon. <laughs> but definitely, uh, you can find me on all, uh, even on all platforms as much as possible. You have any questions reach out to me i'm always open to reach be reached out to so definitely you can find me anywhere of course the content here i do retro tuesdays uh, streaming and other various games um of course on, on twitch.tv slash sir underscore retro zero eight and yeah but where could we find the great and the legendary shadow ace all right you can check me out on twitter at mind of shadow ace uh there that's my primary contact um you know any other anything else outside of that we'll negotiate uh but as far as main contact concern please you can contact me at mind of shadow ace on twitter there uh you can at me we can uh disc- talk and discuss about some things and uh yeah that, that's primarily it i hope you guys once again enjoyed this if you're tuned in a bit late um there again this episode will be archived for your viewing pleasure uh viewing and listening pleasure on reboot retro k uh youtube channel there and you know next time we will try to bring on another guest uh here hopefully it'll go go much smoother and uh going forward we'll have to be a little bit more stricter about uh trying to get our guest in here uh just to avoid uh you know production production errors and, and things of that nature so again if you guys want to get in on the podcast you got to be committed to the cause we can't uh we can't expect too many more uh people to duck and dodge us uh no ducks you know we know we don't want no quack quacks we want people that are mm-hmm. going to be here on time and uh you know ready to go with us um here but with that being said i'm out the door GG's, Sir Retro, if you can want to send the people off to uh, another stream if possible. Otherwise, this has been Shadow Ace, one half of the I Got Next podcast series. Sir Retro, the other half. Um, You guys have a good one, and we will catch you on episode four. Alrighty, y'all. I appreciate it, and we will definitely um, tune out and tune in to another um, channel. 